Okay, cool. Okay, so several contentions. Um, first contention is that lockdown strategies or stay-at-home policies do not work. Um, I would negate that proposition. Uh, another contention I would have is that uh, drastic economic uh, recessions, if not depressions, result in substantial mortality and loss of life. I would negate that proposition as well. Um, the other uh, contention is that when, I actually don't know if this was mentioned, but compared to, uh, for someone who just messaged me, yes, I am an actual doctor. Um, those are the primary two contentions. And then the other thing is just the the drastic, um, what, I, what I seem to perceive as underestimation of just how lethal this thing is and just how, uh, not just in terms of mortality, but also morbidity. Oh, actually another, um, another contention. The notion that the people the virus are going to kill the elderly are, um, the, their economic contribution is either minuscule or not significant enough or not substantial. I, I would negate that proposition as well. Real quick, uh, Avi. So there was one one other thing that got brought up that uh, like the authoritarianism angle, right? And so that was a considerable portion oh, sure. of the middle yeah, yeah. of the debate was about the risk of governments taking too much power. That was quite the jump. Yeah. yeah before yeah. you do this, can I just clarify? Before any of these arguments are levied against those who took the affirmative in this, and also like I don't want to influence the vote because it already seems like um, you guys are pretty blue pilled on. The positions were assigned at random, right? Yeah, they didn't so have we come time into this prepare. debate and we're essentially arguing why you should suck dog dick. Just to be clear here. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Just That's to be why, clear I, here. You know... <laughs> yeah, I mean, Just I mean, to be even, clear even, here. I mean, it's true. I, I thought I was arguing one position. I got ready for that. Yeah. And then I realized that, I <laughs> that, that, was, that, was, yeah. that part yeah. will be fixed for um, the next time this happens. That was yeah. my fault for making this Can more you... confusing than it needed to be. <laughs> Can you hear me? I also want yes. to agree with like Avi on this one because there was something that didn't get brought up, which I thought was an interesting metric. We're talking about, for example, when we quarantine, right? People are less likely to get sick. But we're talking about temporary, temporary to like temporary, I mean like a year to high unemployment rates. But those people eventually will come back to the labor force. If we weren't doing stay at home, more people get infected, more people die. When people die, they're permanently out of the labor force. And with the right stim, uh, the right stimulus, and the right economic policies, over time, those jobs come back. This happens with every recession or even depression if it even gets there. That argument was actually made, yeah. thankfully, in oh, this debate. Can I ask a question: You work in the medical field, or yeah, an actual doctor? No, I, yeah, I'm a medical doctor in New York, the oh, hardest hit area of this. Within the United States, we're in New York. Like I said, Avi, I'm, I'm interested in. I'm, well, wait, 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 Avi, wait, I'm wait. interested in. Okay. I'm interested in hearing the points that you would make, but also what points you would make if you were to try to negate, uh, or to try to argue in the affirmative, like we were assigned to. What good contentions that you would make? Um, just so please. Yeah, I'd so like I actually out. don't. I I mean, look, I can I can play sophist, um, but I don't actually think there are very good or valid yeah um, i mean wait no more to the no. other no. Like, yeah. Just, yeah yeah I, yeah I, I so truly, just, I just, it was an uphill battle yeah. so yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah. No, no, i think i think the authoritarianism arguments made were probably the yeah. ones that were most compelling and had i seen those deployed and developed a lot more by the affirmative team i would have been prepared to vote for them oh yeah you're free to die or kill others that's a good argument that's well, still no, bad like, watch, we have, it's still it's very bad, bad. No to win this argument on this point the way you would have to argue it, though, is that the inherent, like, control, the longer, uh, the longer a lockdown has to last, the shorter in power it has to be, the smaller in power it has to be. So, for instance, if you were to, say, have a, nation long, a nationwide lockdown, you can only hold that nationwide lockdown for so long. Uh, this is, mind you, from somebody who has a little bit more of a background in, like, civil service and understanding how the infrastructure works. You can only, realistically speaking, maybe hold that kind of lockdown, even in a city like New York. What do you think, Abby? Maybe like two months before there starts being civil unrest? Maybe even Yeah, that? but you'd only, you'd only, if done properly, you wouldn't need um, a significantly long time to do this. Um, well, course, and then the idea of... This. The, the, the other thing I, I'd say is that this, um, this idea of a, a, that we would lead into this of, um, authoritarianism um, with these types of 
uh, you, oh, there... infringements of our freedom. So you need to have the type of analogy of precedent sets that would actually be parallel to this. So for example, invoking 9-11 would not be a good parallel because the types of measures set are not designed to be temporary. The types of freedoms imposed upon are not designed to be temporary. They're designed to be an ongoing exercise for our security uh, regardless, and it doesn't seem, it seems to be regardless of whether it's effective or not. Yeah. The, yeah, the Patriot the type, Act is yeah. Yeah. The, cool. yeah, it, it, we're not, we're, this is very different. This is the parallel, it's not, it's a huge symmetry breaker here. The mm -hmm. symmetry breaker is just that this is not in any way designed to be an, a long-term ongoing thing, like any of these other things are. And so there's no precedent that this, especially for, <coughs> for a pandemic, there's no precedent when policies are instituted for pandemics that would take away some amount of freedom that they've led to these long-term totalitarian is a totalitarianist policies I, I just haven't seen that and you need to point to those cases especially for, so, for so what, what are you saying there is no evidence or there is no previous um, time when this kind of government, government. Um, implication has actually happened so in in the past how how was um, how were epidemics dealt with? Uh, differently yeah so in in the past we've we've had a terrible what terrible ways of de dealing with epidemics um one option is to do nothing um which has resulted in depending on which epidemic uh millions if not um possibly up to 100 million deaths in the uh, 1918 spanish flu yeah. Um, I just, but what if someone wants to, the, the point being is just if someone wants to affirm that implementing a stay at home policy is going to lead to this totalitarian, totalitarian and totalitarianism collapse or something, you need to have some kind of evidence for this. So either you but, would but say, isn't okay, it evidence in itself? I mean, isn't that itself the authoritarianism? Well, well, no, no. The concern is not temporary authoritarianism. If, if it's truly, it, look, if, it, if, the, if we're dealing with a stay-at-home policy for the purpose of this, for the purpose of this pandemic, um, if you, unless you have the view that says any amount of government imposing any action on any of its civilians for any amount of time is just inherently this terrible, terrible thing, then it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't concern me. Um, if you you, if the concern here is that, okay, look, the, best, the, the steel man here is, look, if, yes, it's supposed to be temporary. It's supposed to be this temporary imposition because we're a population that seems to need it. We're not following this on our own like some other cultures are. But the problem with that is if we allow the government to do it, we're setting a precedent that would allow them to do it in the future. And even when we don't need it for all these long periods of time where we do not need it, it's going to happen and it's going to happen repeatedly. And that overall will lead to greater problems than not than just doing it in the first place, whatever amount of lives that would save. That's the case that where it needs to land. Well, the problem so, is, that, realistically yeah. speaking, how long do you think you can hold it? Is the issue like the like what we're trying to at least make an argument for? It's actually a separate. It's actually a separate issue. We can talk about that too. So the the the, the issue of how long you can hold it for um, is if you grant that you need a, you can hold it for up to two months. That's all the time you really need if in, in, implemented properly. You, it, this really shouldn't be needed. And when I mean lockdown, I mean like a full lockdown. There's this idea of the hammer and dance. So in several weeks to a month, you, if really fully locked down, and I'm not talking about what we have now. <coughs> right now in the United States, we don't have travel restrictions. We, you can actually go travel from state to state. You can get in your car and do it just fine. We haven't locked down New York from other states. Uh, we actually if locked we, you guys out, actually. Here in Florida, well, here. some states, some states have yeah. have been. Yes, but I can go. I can go to New Jersey. I can go to wait by car or by wait. Are you saying that I, if I get in my car right now, I will have a problem going to say yeah. New Jersey or Philadelphia? No. Yeah, or Florida. Yes. Yeah, Florida. Florida. Florida guys, yeah, between Florida eleven p.m. to five p.m. Right yeah. with license with with light with new checking for New York license plates, correct? Yeah, they're checking for New York like our uh, license plates near I ninety five, and I believe it's the yeah. I but that's state. That's state. Is that a state regulation? Or is that federal? 
Yeah, you know it's a state regulate. It's a state regulation yeah. for New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. I want to say as of like three days ago, they were the three states that like uh, our governor mentioned. Right. So that's yeah, that's a problem. Okay. So that's not that's not what I would consider full lockdown. I would consider a federal a federal regulation that would be universal. Uh, so so Avi, I have United a question, States. right? Avi, I have a question, right? Is, 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 sure. So by the way, I I'm in favor of the lockdown, right? Uh, we were assigned randomly a position just so that we're clear, and I can't see any reason not to lock down. But that being said, when I look at the data, I'm a little bit concerned. And that's why I brought this up in the discussion. Mm -hmm. And I don't yeah. think that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll I, get, I we'll get that. Wasn't, I, yeah, there's I a lot of... I, I just don't I, want to go from topic to topic. Yeah. We'll, 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 I promise you I'm going to get to it. I'm, there's a lot of things I want to get to. First, let's square off the... Yeah. Well, let's square off the totalitarianism first. So, okay. So, the case needs to be made. It's an assertion that I could just as easily dismiss. I could say, well, maybe... Maybe everyone would realize how bad this is, and it would lead to le people being less likely to be totalitarian in, in the future. If, if people like just see how terrible being in lockdown is, they would be like, oh, never again. Um, so that would be my speculation. I could speculate in the opposite direction just as easily as someone can speculate in the forward direction. And so the way to resolve the speculating uh, parties is to present data. That's what really needs to be done. And, and data specifically for these types of measures that were not designed to be long-term effects that are designed to be these short-term impositions on liberty. So if the concern is that it would lead to long-term impositions on liberty, then we would be looking to instances of short-term impositions on liberty, things that were designed to be short-term impositions on liberty, and seeing if any of those things really did have these long-term horrific effects. And I would just ask for evidence for that. And I would have a you would have to compare that against the impositions of short term impositions of liberty um, to the, to the downstream effects of there being more resistance to government totalitarianism. So, for example, after certain impositions of liberty, the population might be, oh, I'm not dealing with this anymore. And so you, you could actually have the opposite effect. So you need an analysis of some sort. You need some sort of data analysis, not just speculation, as intuitive as it might be, in order to actually make the case one way or the other. Well, in the situation that it's not necessarily reproducible given the, the lack of data points, mm -hmm. would it be possible to make an argument stating that while yes, data points should be recognized, maybe the understanding of civil unrest and history of civil unrest in certain cities given, uh, I guess, circumstances also be applicable? Um, if you can, well, then you're talking, well, then you're talking data points now. It's like you're saying you're not talking data points, but now we're going to well, look to certain saying, circumstances. Like, I'm not, not, no, I'm, I'm not sure. There's not sufficient numbers of, you know, pandemics or lockdowns. Wait, hold on. Uh, so there, I don't know if there have been many polls conducted, but for example, I think one of the only polls that were conducted, it was conducted by Morning Consult and Politico, and they found that 74% of Americans actually support a national lockdown. Or a national quarantine. No, I, un I understand that. But the question I, is... Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but the question would be, if what, therefore what? So, therefore, they're going... Is it going to make us more likely or less likely to have a long-term uh, totalitarianism uh, policies taking over? I haven't been convinced of that. And I'm not sure that there's any data to convince me of that. Now, if someone wants to say there's no data available or there's very limited data available, that's fine. You can make the case that it's, well, it's hard to get data, the data's very sketchy, it happened a long time ago, fine. But that, the fact that data is not available doesn't somehow grant strength to a case that relies on data. Just because it's harder to get data doesn't mean the case that relies on data is somehow stronger. It doesn't make the available data any stronger either. Um, A.B., quick question. So if our current projections are only until about August. What happens after that? That's where the dance comes in. We'll get to that as well. Okay. Yeah, so the hammer, the first, the, the str strongest part of the lockdown is called the hammer. So the hammer is when everything, we're, we're just trying, the goal of the hammer is to get the growth rate below one. We're trying to get the growth rate um, below one for a sufficient amount of time, such as, such as we deplete the active cases as much as possible. So 0.08, point that's, zero eight, that's, right? Anything uh, below point one zero one eight would be declines. Yeah. yeah. Any yeah. R is R. Keep R below one is the goal, and keep it long enough so that we really do get the cases under control. Um, getting the cases under control allows us uh, 
to restrict some of the lockdowns. Penis music. And when we... Hello? What happened? Uh, yeah, uh, penis someone, music. Uh, good job. Okay, could someone mute the people who are, um, I don't know, coming in? Anyway, um, so it allows us to restrict some of the lockdown. And as we restrict some of the lockdown, and again, this is going to be targeted, um, targeted drawing back of these lockdowns from different places, depending on how they're doing. Um, you would expect R to increase a little bit after you do that. And then you're going to have to strategically take away and implement, again, certain lockdowns. Again, this is going to be more lax than the initial hammer period, but there's going to be a sort of different path, of the different, a little somewhat of a different way of life. The end game here is as follows. The purpose of doing this whole dance is to not overflow the hospital system. If you overflow the hospital system, you are going to you're going to drastically increase the mortality rate until, and you're going to keep doing this until you either get to an endpoint such as herd immunity in the population as people trickle in with more infections, more cases, herd immunity will take over, or option B, a vaccine is developed, or option C, certain treatments are developed. Any of those things are a good long-term uh, strategy, and they probably play, have interplay with each other as well. So again, the first stage, which you're expecting to last weeks to months, is the hammer. And the next stage is the more long-term strategy, which is the dance. The dance meaning R will go up and decrease and go up and decrease as you implement and take away certain restrictive policies. Uh, and again, the, whole, the purpose of this is to just buy time. What are we buying time for? We're buying time to increase surge capacity. Surge capacity is our healthcare system. It's the amount of patients we're able to provide different levels of care for, whether that's inpatient hospitalization, ICU, intensive care, or um, the other thing we're looking at are ventilators, our ventilator supply. So when we do this, we're buying time for several things. We're buying time for us to build up our healthcare system. The more we build up our surge capacity, the more we can successfully restrict, uh, sorry, uh, hold back on the restrictions. The more successfully we can take away the restrictions while not overloading our surge capacity. That's the whole idea. Because people are going to get it, you're going to get it, I'm going to get it. The idea is to get it in such a way such that we don't destroy our healthcare system in the process. Does yeah, that make God's sense? God's going to take so many lives, no matter the fuck what we do. All right, so as I'll be the question. Wait, wait, that, wait, that question. Wait, wait. Because we're dealing with the reproductive yeah. right now. So he, he is a concern that I have. So I, by the way, I'm, I'm in complete agreement that... Um, uh, lockdown measures are probably like so quarantine and lockdown measures are the, are the best available option that we have at present in terms of reducing the reproductive rate short of um, a vaccine or a cure or some way of treating this pharmacologically. Now, here's the problem. When I'm looking at the data and I'm looking at some of the most heavily affected areas, specifically when I look to Italy um, over the last week, week and a half, and they've had lockdown measures in place since March 8th, March 8th uh, like extreme lockdown measures in place, place since March 8th. There's been a, re so we're starting to see a, a slowdown in Lombardy. So that's the area with the greatest proportion of cases. It's like something like um, 50,000 or 60,000 active cases. And the rate of growth there is about 2% to 2.5% uh, to 3%. You know, it's, it's moving well, around just, a little Well, just bit. really quick, real quick, um, just for Italy, it, it's so, again, I wouldn't, so different, here's the timeline for Italy. Um, it's not just everything happened on March 8th. So some hap things happened before March 8th, some things happened after March 8th. So in no, Italy, no, agree, event, yeah, yeah. The schools were closed on, the, on March 5th. Non-essential shops were closed on March 10th. Uh, Non-essential yeah. movement was then on March 10th. Land borders were closed on March 10th. And it was only until March 26th until non-essential production was stopped. Non-essential production. But um, in terms of most lockdown measures short of like a, a, a stage three lockdown or non-essential movement outside of like emergency services. And yeah, um, that didn't food. happen until March 26. Yes. So okay. I, All right. I'm, continue. I'm just, 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 just putting that out. Okay. Now yeah, I'm, talking to you about, so, so I'm saying what's in, in line with the lockdown measures that we have in place in, in the U S for example. Right. We're, oh, so I don't think those are nearly enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're not even at that yeah. state. Uh, at that rate yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't even call it a lockdown. There's no federal. There's no federal policy locking people down right. from travel. It's but, just but the still, states are deciding to do their own. No, it so, helps so, absolutely. It helps. It may, but the thing with 
the thing with viruses like these is if you want to actually be effective, doing something marginal is not the way to do it. Um, it, it only takes a, a small enough amount of people to ruin this thing for everyone. And so if your concern is, well, we're doing these things and it doesn't seem to be working that well, the real answer to that is because we're actually not doing these things and we're not doing these things that well. We are. We're doing yeah. a marginal. So, so, we're, it, it's marginal. I, 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 don't think you, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. And let me be clear. I think sure, that people ahead. are looking at the overall data in Italy and they're looking at the, the rate of new cases from a week ago versus today. And they're saying, hey, look, the number of new cases doesn't seem to be increasing. And that's primarily because they're not increasing in the area with the highest, um, the hi the highest <clears throat> rates of infection. But because the, 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 rate of in, the rate of infection there, or the, at least the reproduction rate there is significantly less. So the growth rate there is about two, two and a half percent every other day compared to other regions where it's between five and 15 percent. Are you talking about new, are you talking about new cases or are you talking about new cases? Um, okay. So new cases actually are, are seem, I'm not, when I'm looking at new cases day to day. So after, if we look at after March, um, March 28th, or even after, um, it seems to have been so exponentially. I, yeah, go ahead. I'll post the data from, I'll, I'll, um, yeah. from Middle East evidence. Okay? Just world, world of like, um, I'm looking at it right now. That seems to be one of the biggest, most probably hit sites right now. I mean, out there in this whole thing. Also, where are you posting things if you're going to post them? In debate evidence. Um, the dates on the top. Uh, I think you should be able to figure out what's what. Uh, it's come in in odd order. So the 1st of April is on the top, and then the 3rd of April is on the bottom, 5th of April is in the middle. Um, but you can use from the 1st to the Yeah, 5th if but if you, you only look at the 1st, no, you're not going to, of course, but you're not, you're looking, if you look at the time span like that, you're not going to see the truth. So look, I'll, I'll no, no, post you, you data that encompasses, like, the full picture here. Um, if you're, here, hold on. So, okay. any data on like tofu, soy boys? Like wait, 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 wait. Just, just, just hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done with him yet. Um, okay. So, just to clarify, do you understand just... what I'm saying, though? Do you understand what I'm saying? You, are Are you saying that uh, we don't see a, a change in the rate? Is and it has to do with the individual sub areas um, where we have highly densely population, and that hasn't been changing, but other areas have. So what I'm saying is that there's a greater level of reduction, that, well, the greatest level of production, uh, reduction in the, incre the rate of spread is in the area where there's the greatest number of cases. Um, everywhere else, the sure. rate is increasing at a far faster rate. Sure. But again, if we look at, if we look at, um, if we look at the total picture of Italy, we actually, Italy actually has been leveling off from where, but that's uninformed. Growth. Looking okay, at the total is rate is uninformed. Why? It's uninformed. Be so it's, uh, it, it's uninformed because it's looking, it's taking firstly a mathematical model, something like R0, placing it in a, a pragmatic system or practical system, and then looking at the it's, data. No, this system, isn't, again, this isn't model. It's not model. It's, it's, it's looking not, at it it's again. It's not a model. I'm sorry. It's not, I'm sorry. It's not a model. It's just mean, historical data. Mean, so you're looking at the data again holistically at it from a, the perspective of a mathematical model, as opposed to looking at it individually in areas of an outbreak. And what I'm saying is in the individual areas of the outbreaks, so in individual regions, provinces, cities, etc., that even where there is a reduction total, if you look at the growth rate in the areas that have that are yet um, as of yet less affected, the growth rate there is significantly higher than in the area oh, that is most greatly affected. Oh, of course it will be. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I understand. Okay. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. That's but, but with that's lockdown expected. measures in place. Of course that's going to happen. Yes, and, th and that's, going to be, okay. that's going to be expected. But the, but the point is that even so, even so that's still, that is still um, far eons better than having non-lockdown measures. I agree. Would allow, yeah. Of but course. that's going and to prolong can... the active life of the virus. That's going to keep prolonging. Sure, it. but again, it's again, this is not the goal. That's not. Yep, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. The goal is not to. Um, you're, you look, the virus is going to be with us. 
This is not going to be something that's going to not be with us anymore. The goal here is not to eliminate because we're not, we're not going to do that. The goal here is just to buy enough time to not overflow the healthcare system right now. That's all we can do right now. That's all um, we care and, yeah, until it's not all we care about. It's just the best strategy we have at this time until we buy enough time to increase surge capacity and then lead to an end game. Um, there is the no data, plan, is there? Of course there's a plan. I just outlined the hammer and dance. I just, well, yeah, I just outlined it in detail. Stay home until we have a plan. That's the no, 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 no. The dance no. doesn't mean stay at home. That's not what I said. That's the part of the, it's part of the hammer. It may I'm not real, necessarily be that. Here. They say stay in your house. Okay. Yes, not, you should do that now. That's part of the hammer. That's completely compatible. compatible. With Ain't everything no I've been saying. So, but so one, one, so one second. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. One, one moment. I just want to. I just want to post this data. I'm just trying to find the um, debate evidence um, yeah. channel. I can tell you. This. Ah, there it's it the is. It top. is in the under formal debates you should see it with two stars on each side i've tagged you in the room so you can find it more easily okay i see debate discussion politics politics to um religion chat serious discussion coronavirus chat memes debate is debate dis uh, debate evidence right under there okay yep, there you so go. i'm going to post yeah so under the, here look and yes this is the total the total data is um, important. Yes, their growth rate is going to look not in, if you can take the total of Italy and you break Italy down into different um, different subsections, you are going to see R rates that are higher in some sections and uh, not higher in other sections. Absolutely. Right. But even if the though the overall, lockdown measures are. Of course, of course, you're not going to have course, no, like... you're probably not going to have. I mean, look, it would be it would be almost an impossible unless you have like the most extreme lockdown possible, just everlasting, you're, you're going to expect this. You're going to expect this kind of dance. Um, that's, that's, fun. that's expected. You still, it's so still better to positing, see a graph like, yeah, yeah. what are you positing? So what, what I'm positing is that the, the reason that you're seeing a decline right now is because that in, in, in the, um, the, the necessary, uh, services for any for any city being run there's a vulnerable population of which is an irreducible an irreducibly vulnerable population and so as that as that vulnerable population the rate of infection increases in that vulnerable population um that the rate can decline there um of those that are most most vulnerable um and that that number is true for each of these individual regions provinces and cities so in a, in, in, a, in a country like the united states with 295 cities um the vulnerable pop, the the vulnerable population think of the virus like something that's acquiring resources those vulnerable populations are completely untapped resources and so um as soon as lockdown measures are revoked what will happen is that we will start to see an increases in the spread there a absolutely um, absolutely and that's yep that's part of the dance so we'll, we can go through that too so the idea again the idea is not to never see an increase in r in any area like that's not the goal i want to make that as clear as possible like almost impossible you're not the goal of all of this is not to accomplish R being less than one in every single providence in every single town. There's going to be a town where R, at least for one day, goes up higher than one. The goal here is to do get R to be less than one in enough of the provinces, in enough of the towns, in enough of the areas for a long enough amount of time such that we can not overflow our surge capacity. That's the goal. So the the effective reproductive rate less than one, but the um, that's because of the lockdown imposition. As soon as you lift the lockdown impositions again, mm -hmm. the re yep. reproductive rate of the virus itself is somewhere between will, two and yeah. I don't think yeah, it's no, two point five. It will increase. We'd have so something like eleven so, million. We'd have something like eleven million infections today if it was two point five. It's probably yeah, yeah, something just the, like two. Just this, yeah. So so the idea is as you restrict again, it's not. It's not binary, like lockdown, non-lockdown. You're, what you're going to have after we do this hammer, which is like a full lockdown, what we're going to be able to do is take some of the restrictions away, and then you'll start seeing R creep up. You will. Um, and then you'll have to strategically re-implement some of the restrictions in certain hotspot areas. That's fine. But the idea is to do this and continue to do it, that, have that back and forth in order to balance the economy with 
this long-term strategy in such a way that you don't overwhelm search capacity. That's the goal. Continuing to do this and having that balance such that search capacity is not overwhelmed. And as you build up search capacity, yep. you're going to be able to withdraw the restrictions for a longer period of time before you get anywhere close to search capacity. Eventually, what's going to happen is we're going to have herd immunity. We're going to just eventually you'll just, well, you the oh, second we'll have third a wave. Yeah. yeah, or a vaccine. Oh, we'll yeah, a eventually, vaccine. Or, a vaccine, or, a tr or a treatment or one, one of those things such that you would Whichever be able to. Yeah. But, but, yeah. But, but, so the point but I'm making here time, is I think that. Yeah, people, this is a short. Wait, yeah, I, don't know. I think people are, are, are misinformed about the sort of long term. Uh, so, in terms of. They're, they're, they're more uh, familiar with the epidemiology about what we can expect short term, but maybe they're misinformed about what the long term consequences of this is until we either have herd immunity, an effective, a very effective treatment, or um, a, a vaccine. And I think that's why uh, I was taking the responsibility. Of course, I think that's, yeah. We're not winning yeah, this think, in two weeks. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's just a, a misunderstanding of what the goals are. Of, of the lockdown. I think people have this idea that the lockdown is to get rid of the virus. Like that's, that's not going to happen. Um, if you look just real quick um, with the lockdown measures on March, uh, on March 10th, um, it looked, if you look at the lockdown measures on March 10th, uh, you can see that it took an, about 10 days or so after that for um, R to become less than one in Italy overall, the overall R. Um, the new cases per day did taper off. So it is compatible with the, the time frame you would expect if you consider delays, if you consider, if you consider delays, if you can. When you consider, you, though, you can, like, um, when, when you consider, like, the lot, um, one of the other big misunderstandings is a huge issue is um, from the time period that you do this lockdown and hit your apex how long after the apex you continue to have certain lockdown measures in place um because i feel like mm -hmm. a lot of people yeah, look at it is they, they look at like china and they look at south korea and they say like oh well like you know they had their lockdown and once they they hit their apex. It was X amount of days until like they started talking about it. Uh, and the reality is, is that um, their versions of quarantine and what they did and what anywhere in the United States is currently doing is like laughably different. Like the, the current Absolutely. level of quarantine and lockdown going on in New York right now is a fucking joke. It's like, it, it, it's disgusting. Like what, what, what is currently happening? Yeah. No, and, I agree. So we're not using New York as an example though. Would you guys agree that the curfew is like kind of the curfews that some states are having, like Florida? Can I just can I just answer that is, question? Um, yeah, let, let me just resp respond to that. Okay, so so yes, yeah, so I, I agree with that. So the question the question you had was like, what what time frame are we looking at? And it's yes, it depends on the type of lockdown we do. If we do an extreme lockdown, we will be able to, from the apex onward, it won't take as long to get until a point where we hit a certain percentage of our th surge capacity threshold which we will deem, okay, now we can start t taking back the lockdown. If we have a more lax lockdown, such as what we're doing now, it will take longer. You'll have a longer tail. Right, we're looking we're, at we're, probably like, like mid-July, right? Like early July, like for, yeah, like, and for like a New it, York. Like. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't, it, this may end up panning out to be how it ends up happening, but it doesn't have to be that way if there are more strict lockdown measures taking place. If there are more strict lockdowns taking place, you'll actually get to the point where you can reduce the lockdown sooner rather than if you have a more lax lockdown. So the question is, though, is that so, if yeah, we do yeah. enforce a lockdown, federally speaking, and, and excuse me if I didn't necessarily understand when your original argument was for it, how long do you honestly think, because I gave a number, but I didn't really get your opinion on it, and, I'm, and this is coming from somebody who has family within the civil services who have to work and have to deal with this and coordinate this, how exactly are we to coordinate fire departments who have to be closed and have to have loose firefighters for up to 14 days after going out on a call where they could be exposed. How long can we feasibly speaking hold this kind of federal lockdown for and still technically be yeah. soft or soluble? Yeah. So if you're at, if your question is in terms of the lockdown, the quote unquote lockdown that we're currently doing, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. I'm not sure that's a more, no, yeah. Oh, Oh, you mean the ones that other countries have done? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So 
if we i don't the answer to that question is i actually don't know i don't know the intricacies of our government system um and our fire department and our police force in order for me to give you a, a confident timeline what i can say is if we look at other countries that have done this that have enforced really strict uh policies or whether they be uh, full lockdowns or some sort of intrusive policy um such as what south korea did it didn't seem to take that long um we're talking about uh, weeks, if not a month or so. It's well, not like we... Might be effective to that? that yeah, that's that... the other... Of course, of course, of course, it'll be much different. It's a different culture. So that's... that. The, the problem in the United States is you have the worst combination. Um, you have a combination of a populace... The, yeah, yeah, you have a combination of a populace that have, for whatever reason, uh, a certain contingency of the population, which is substantial enough to ruin it for everyone, has made it their mission in life to downplay the state, has made it their mission in life to um, really, really go against the grain and go against, to the point of just being contrarian without evidence, and act that way. And you have a government that refuses to infringe upon their liber liberties to the degree that other countries have. And so you have this really bad combination of people who, a government that won't severely infringe on a liberty, even for a temporary period of time, and people who desperately need to have their liberty infringed upon. And that's just a really bad situation. And that's why we're, traject we're trajecting the worst possible of all countries uh, in terms of deaths, in terms of new cases. We're so leading the path the to be- are actually accurate, yes? No, no, no. We can, we can pretend China doesn't exist, then we would still be number one. The United States would still be the worst uh, See, possible. See, but Avi, I think there's a different scenario. reason. I think there's a different reason. So I think that the you U.S. is particularly more vulnerable, is more vulnerable because of the, the number of cities per capita. At 295 cities per capita, that the, has the highest density of cities outside of uh, anywhere in the world, but the, even the highest number of cities total um, are close second to th uh, to it, uh, India at 302, which are which create pockets for embers of outbreak to develop because of the the necessary um, services and infrastructure that I need that you need to run even in a lockdown, and these pockets will continue to to act as reservoirs for this. For this virus to continue you can graph it you can okay so th so let's just let's just set the goalpost then let's say we were to graph it we would say we were to graph the new cases and new deaths per per and graph it per cities per capita and then we see that we're still number one would that change your mind no i'm uh, saying that's why if i, if I, if I were about, no no if i, I understand i understand what he's saying he's saying the reason why we're seeing that is because we have the most cities per capita one way of getting around that is, is controlling for that is just saying okay let's just graph it per cities per capita for every different country so what do you guys think about the curfews um there in some in some states right do you think the real purpose of it um is basically to prevent crime because of the people kind of getting uh edgy uh agitated contentious and what have you because of what's going on no, like I'm not, I, like I if you go out at that time, you're probably going to be doing something criminal other than the fact that you I mean, know not only that, but if you think about it, lootings could become a crime. Like, think about it. You've got a lack yeah, of police force right now. Like, there, there's businesses or, cases of like, of like okay. a, guys, of like guys, guys, we can we can talk robbed. we can we can talk about what well, we can talk about these questions. I just want to finish up the other points of contention that I had uh, before that. And then we can go to those. Um, so we covered the we covered the totalitarianism concern. We covered the um, the case about Italy. Um, the other contention that I had um, is that well, well, more broadly, that lockdown measures don't work. That we t that's why we talked about Italy. So the other points I would like to make is just that if we look at countries that have taken this seriously in terms of policy, and we've compared that to other similar countries. So for example, if we compare Sweden, that did not take this seriously compared to the other Nordic countries, such as Denmark, Iceland, Norway, Estonia, and Finland. What you see is that their mortality rate is in exponential growth and they're beating all of their other Nordic um, relatives. So I'll post that graph in debate evidence. Interesting. Do you and agree you see... that there's a threshold for a little, like, like, sorry if this is not really... Like, do, do you agree that there's a threshold for number of infections within like a specific city? Um, 
people seem to be focusing like real aggressively on testing as being a, an important metric and at a certain point like it, it really doesn't matter anymore for like how you should go about assessing the severity of the virus in 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 a, in a given environment if i'm sorry can you just repeat the question in terms oh, of so like in me, so, so like for example i don't think the testing matters in new york anymore like i testing I, doesn't matter yes I don't, I, I, I don't think, think I, okay. I, I don't think Why that the not? type of information that you're going to get from testing or like the, the the necessary metrics if you if 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 we're not going to modify you like our social distancing that. or quarantine. Yeah, so so I think it I think it absolutely matters. I'll tell you the reasons why. Um, so one of the reasons why is uh, again, well, look, I'll I'll just be clear. If if the outcomes of your tests don't mean make any difference in any policy or any uh, or any action that the civilians take in response to it, I agree. If testing, that's basically a way of saying if testing doesn't affect anything, then the testing is not going to affect anything. Sure. But but it's but this almost, seems to be the case, right? Like we we, we I have don't agree with that. Where where have we instituted a lockdown or a stay or or like a hold in place order where where there was an increased level of infection that occurred that we then made a more severe form of quarantine stay in place order so so that's so remember i said not just policy but also in the behavior of the populace that are that are impacted so it's not so for example if i want to go to if you take a hundred people who want to go to new york and you say okay well here are the total amount of cases in new york it's xyz and you say okay 50, 50 of those hundred people ended up going to new york now let's say they were exposed to the information that it was said xyz times 10 people uh, times 10 are the cases in New York. How many of those people would end up going to New York now? Would it still be 50? Probably not. It's not just, um, it's not just policy. What, even, if pol even if no policy changes, testing is still important because it affects the behavior of the populace in their sure, own travel I, patterns. I don't think this is the number that affects the, to the behavior. I think the numbers that affect the behavior of the populace is number of hospital admissions, number of intubations, and number of deaths. Sure, that's, that's fine. The other, yeah, the other. I mean, look, the the point of the there are other points of testing as well. Um, other points of other points of testing. If if I mean, well, the, there's other purposes of testing is to inform us scientifically. I mean, even outside of this scope, it's to inform us scientifically on how epidemics and pandemics work. That can help us in the in the next one. It's to inform a side of there, and I would actually reject that proposition. I do think there are some people that really do pay attention to the numbers, especially when the media touts them all the time. So um, hospitalizations and some a, viruses, I would agree, um, with a virus that seems to have upwards of a 70% asymptomatic like um, illness state, I would say that like... Wait, we don't know those numbers. Okay, like, Hold oh, on. So we do. 70. Right. So, so, no, so, so, we so, don't. Okay. So, no. Okay. So, Post data. Show me, show me. The estimates for asymptomatic range widely they range from the 13.3 percent to around 70 percent okay well fine and, I'll, I'll use a 40 or what what if i will use 13 right. well so um in, okay in, let, me ref let me let me rephrase in, in a disease that the general public believes 70 percent of people if not more are asymptomatic if, if, if the 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 general like um perception of the american people on what percentage of people are affected by this is pretty fucking small Right, like this is how we started with it being the old people disease at first, and then this is how we started with like the like oh like most people get it, but most people like don't get sick from it, or most people don't require hospitalization from. It. Um, I think that when you see like the lax behavior that people think of, like oh like I got the COVID, right? Like the the this like it does not carry the weight of like an Ebola or 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 another disease that's like. Um, you know, to, to suggest that someone may have it or to suggest that you have it or to find out that someone you know has it as being like this grave issue isn't the way that people are responding to hearing that people are COVID positive. I mean, that's because of mortality rate, though. Like, Ebola had, what, like a 45 to 50% mortality rate? Like, that's like, it's not really comparable. Yeah, like, I mean, it, like, Ebola literally killed but, a, like almost yes, the majority of my people point. Like, Yeah, but the, So, like, the, obviously it, knowing someone that had right. COVID versus someone that, would ha someone that had my Ebola is, is not comparable. No, 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 he, he's, he, he, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, the, the thing is, well, the problem with COVID is that it's, 
it's actually worse than Ebola because it's it ha Ebola kills kills people too quickly to spread to as many people and to kill as many people. That's the evolutionary disadvantage for its own sake for, for Ebola. It has a very high mortality rate and it kills very quickly, too quickly to spread it to others. Is why so few people end up getting it. The, the classic it, in terms problem. of but but getting but but getting um, in terms of how testing affects policy. Look, we already have other states, as mentioned by people elsewhere. I mean, it's not ideal what they're doing, but they are making some restrictions to people coming from New York. They're saying, well, if the federal government's not going to do it, we're going to make our own restrictions to people from New York. Right. In and that this case, is like yeah. pretty dumb, right? This is like in, in most of the places that are doing oh, that's this. that's clearly, this is okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. But then the problem... Like, you think Rhode the, Island? Hold on. Hold, just, wait, just, just one second. So, the like... The problem here is clearly with the political response, not the act of testing. No, I don't think that. Like we agree so, about, right? So what I'm saying is, is that I don't. I, I think that if New York did no testing, right? I think literally if this was like a disease that like did not have the ability to test, I, I think the numbers that you would be seeing that I care about that I mentioned, um, that, that a state like Rhode Island, even if I don't agree with the response that they're having, would have the same response of limiting access from New Yorkers to Rhode Island, right? I don't think that the 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 positive case and, and the fact that like people are reported positive to have this does anything but diminish people's perception of the severity of this illness. Well, the other, there's other issues, well, there's other problems. I mean, like, I, okay, here's what, what some of the things I strongly disagree on. So by knowing the number of cases, you can anticipate the amount of healthcare services you require. That's the other thing. So knowing the number of positive cases, if you know the number of percentage of people who are going to require inpatient hospitalization, require ICU status, require do you, do you really know that? So we don't. Yes, get you can extrapolate. Wait, 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 wait. You know it more you than not that. testing. You know, you know it more than a lot more than not testing. Yeah. Sure. You this know it a old, lot more. So than in New York, this isn't the way we're getting this information, right? The majority of testing cases that are going, um, that result in like. Um, the the actual numbers are, are um, ER walk-ins, urgent care walk-ins, and people that are generally of a severe enough symptom state that even if like an admission isn't necessary, um, close, that's, up, close that's observation our test, is that's our right? test case scenario here. Yes, people walk yes. right ER. right yes. now. The, yeah, so is, the, this, there's, this, yes. we don't so have the enough, way you would we don't have enough tests. That's, that's like the wait, worst wait, example no, no, of test case scenarios ever. Exactly. Right. Hey, uh, so Abby, God, God bless you guys. On wait, the wait, but I don't. Wait, hold on, wait. hold on one second. So, the, how does that mean we shouldn't be? Is it your? I just want to know what you present. Is it your position that New York should not test? No, my position is that New York <laughs> is at a current place. New York currently is at point in the fact that like um, like uh, quarantine restrictions aren't being increased in any way, which is the only thing that I would see the testing um, would would want to mandate a change in. Uh, and uh, our, our knowledge of our census information of hospital admissions into patients, ICU beds and like need for ventilators. Uh, pretty much all these models we have at this point are, are pretty concrete to... How, like, how many patients, number, to the how many patients that, do you wait, see? Wait, wait. Okay, to, guys, to, guys, to, guys, just, just let, him, let him talk. Let me listen. Hold to on, the guys, numbers one that person we that... currently have, um, there is a version of testing we could be doing that would actually provide us with the information we need. And this isn't all, the way that we are testing. Wait, so I want to, my question is, okay, I know the way we're testing now, we're test, we, our testing is much more, we don't have enough tests, we're limiting tests to people who are either coming to the ER uh, with symptoms uh, sufficient enough or inpatient people, and we're limiting the amount of testing to outpatients pretty substantially. Right. Um, my, my question is, I, and, and I understand how that might, well, we can use that. We even that data is better than no data, in my view. But right, there's better. We yeah. don't need no data. Not necessarily. The, the, the data that we realistically need is we need to do random case studies with a seven day window in between of every zip code in the tri state area of like probably fifty to a hundred tests per zip code to to get like a reasonable assessment of like population density that has the virus and those that don't. Right. This is the model of information that like would be useful, and we're not doing this.
Okay, so it's not your position that we shouldn't be testing. The way we're testing okay. is like the the way okay. that the U.S. is currently structured mm -hmm. in the way that they're testing is doing nothing. It's pointless. Okay, well, you, like, okay. not I, I'm not. Wait, right, you just I, I said definitely. We, wait, here's what I. Then you said the U.S. and then you said they. So where are you? Wait, wait. Oh, are you guys dude, trying to emulate okay. high school well, debate? Because I actually dude, do dude. high school debate. Guys. <laughs> All right, guys, guys, guys. Okay, so just to be clear, so it's not. It's not your position that we shouldn't be doing testing. You think there's a, a better way of doing, a much better way of doing testing. Yeah, I would say the numbers we're getting sure, now of course. Like, I, are, I, are, yeah, are no, I, about as useful as okay. no numbers. Okay, I don't know if it's, I don't know if I would agree with about as useful as no numbers, but I definitely agree that we should definitely have, have much more better ways of testing. Really, we, we need mass testing. We need... We in the U.S. Testing. or we somewhere else? We in the, we in the U.S. Okay. So let me just move on to um, the claim that, okay, so the next point of contention that Americans 50 and older would be, uh, so Americans 50, or I don't know if 50 and older was mentioned, but Americans, the elderly, the people either. who are likely to be um, dying from, from uh, SARS-CoV-2 or the cause of agent of uh, COVID-19 are COVID -19. least likely to, sure, so are least likely to contribute to the economy. The um, all right, guys, chill for yes. a second, all right? <laughs> um, so the 50, uh, people 50 and older actually contribute fairly substantially to the economy. It's actually not true, so I'll post um, mm -hmm. this study here. Is that a question, mm -hmm. or is that a, yeah. or is that a statement? Who do you think is buying no, it's all a the gel? No, it's a statement. Okay. It's well, a what, statement. What, I, I would so, say, it, it, when you're debating somebody, when, when you're saying a statement, don't end it like you're going up, like it's a question. No, no. Say it like it's a state. All right, all right, dude, dude, dude. Do we? All right, okay. Yes. Um. Could. All right. Just, just. Enough, just give me a second here. Um, no problem. So. Yeah. And, see, yeah, yeah. and, and I also, I also think yeah. that the fact that you have to look it up, make you. It, it's like you're asking the question out loud, and then you have to look it up to make sure. What are you as fucking God? God? Um, what is happening? All right. Could, could we, could, all right. All right. We gotta. We gotta. All right. We gotta troll here. Could we? Could we mute the troll? All right, so let's let's talk data. Uh, mute the troll so we can talk the data. All right. So Americans, Americans uh, 50 and older actually contribute 8.3 trillion dollars um, to our GDP. That is um, we about turn, we turn them the fertilizer. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So that's that's approximately. So that that's about you know, maybe do, 35, you, 40 percent. Do we have Doobie in here? Yeah. Doobie's. Doobie, doobie, doobie. He's muting people. Somewhere. Oh, okay, he's there. Yeah, I was just trying to get him mute. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So, eight point three trillion. So the total, the total um GDP of the United States, um, is approximately uh, twenty trillion or twenty point five trillion. People of uh, fifty and over contribute eight point five trillion dollars to GDP. It's like what is that? Forty percent around. So that's a very significant proportion of our economy. Yeah, but they die, we get all their money anyways. It's a very substantial proportion of the uh, economy. The other thing to point out about this is it's not just mortality. Even if you do recover, even if you recover from this, there's emerging evidence that there are long-term, there may be long-term complications of this infection, even for young people. So... One of the things that has been noted is pulmonary fibrosis, that uh, the lung capacity is not the same anymore after people, uh, for some people after they go through this infection. Uh, another thing is uh, fertility may possibly be affected, uh, specifically the luteinizing hormone to testosterone ratio in men may have a long-term consequence of that. Yeah, there are how some, can we measure uh, those things um, on such a short-term we can't. Basis. We've only been in this. We, we're uh, not. We're not. So the idea is, no, if the claim, if the, all, all that's being said here is that there may be, that we, we do, there's emerging evidence that there may be long-term consequences and that, that well, affect young people. Well, you can't call no, them long-term no, 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 unless no. So there's the long-term is actually... There's one and only one. Well, well, pulmonary, one time, well yes. pulmonary, wait, wait, pulmonary fibrosis is the long-term uh, effect. It, it, lungs, once they're scarred, don't unfibrose. Even if we can, if we uh, see pulmonary okay, fibrosis, I okay, I, I yeah, it's know. even if we see that in the short term, that's even if we, it, that's a long term it, it consequence. To that, right? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, going to be that's going to be a long term consequence. I Very just have question. to say and though, so, your 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 contention that you keep bringing up is this idea of fifty and over. Now you know 
when when we were debating this, the um, age group that we were stating was those that are 65 plus, which makes a big difference to the argument that you're making as to the participation in the workforce and, and the contribution economically. So I don't know why the, you know, maybe there's just been some misunderstanding, but the idea that it would be for people of 50 years to 65 years is not not what was argued. It was argued that it is those over the age of retirement that th they themselves are of a group that is significantly yeah, like, more. Yeah, like, like a 15 year moving the goalpost. Yeah, basically, it's not. We're not talking about fifty plus. We're oh, talking that's about yeah, that's 60. fine. Even if even if we look at, but then even if, but but here's the problem though. If you want to include the fifty to sixty five in the area contributing to the economy, I don't think he does. Then you. No, I don't. That's <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, he. No, you do. No, you do. You said. You just said. Wait, wait, wait. You just said. You look. Correct me if I'm wrong. You, you guys are saying the same thing. You just thing. said fifty fifty to sixty five is in the category of what you would consider contributing to the economy, correct? Okay, but how many of those are just like billionaires? Wait, like I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to this guy. Wait, wait, I'm not sure. talking. So I'm what talking like, what I'm bill? saying. Okay, sure. Yeah. So yeah. the issue is if you go to including them under that category, then you have to deal with the increased case fatality rate for that population, which which so are what, contributing to the economy. Category, so what category? The stop, millionaire category? Stop. 50... 50 to 65. Why no, is this guy still on not on the Yeah, like, I don't uh, Doobie, we can't we can't do this if, if you're going to unmute the, you know, like we got to if someone's being disruptive, you got to mute him. Is there is there a room we can use that like just mutes not, everyone? Like he's not he's not just being disruptive. He's like he's he's also just like really dumb. Like he's, he's, he's <laughs> saying really stupid things. Like <laughs> like he's just, he's not tracking the conversation. Um, hey Abby, Abby, okay, Abby yeah, I'll say one thing before uh, get, we get too far. Uh, God bless you guys on the front line who are, who are facing the stuff, who are required to do this and that. You're keeping the um, the uh, Hippocratic Oath, too. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I really mean that. So, so, uh, got, so got a girlfriend on there, too. Can I ask a question? Wait, I just want to make sure he understands. Yeah, so, sorry. sorry. Uh, Avi, I, I do understand that the 50 to 65-year-olds are also – disproportionately affected but in during the debate our argument was that those over the age of 65 should be perhaps under some sort of um self-isolation more severely than the people under that age that can participate in the workforce as for those in the 50 to 65 year old bracket they they themselves need to take extra precautions. I don't think that it ha that a universe and I understand the idea of cross contamination and the idea that um, people that um, the young people can pass it on, that kind of thing. But what I'm saying is that the 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 responsibility of keeping yourself away from other people falls to the individual, and those individuals themselves that are in those risk groups need to take that upon themselves. Um, as as to and and that's my contention or what I'm arguing. I mean, I was initially on the other side, but anyway, I guess we'll just keep going on this one. Um, yeah, so so when you're saying, you know, what you're saying is valid, but it's just it wasn't what we were arguing, and, and I just want that to be clarified. Okay, cool. So the, the 65 and older, I'd have to look at the numbers in terms of what percent of the GDP is 65, people 65 and over do contribute. Um, in terms of the idea of just... Uh, just having them have a more severe form of quarantine. I'm very skeptical if that's actually going to end up panning out, uh, well, end up working. I just disagree that, again yeah. with you because um, for a start, it can be quite easily said that those of that age bracket tend to be more responsible. And 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 for that reason, they're going to comply more well, easily. Well, they're not the with... problem. That's not the problem. I agree. Well, They'll comp that, yeah. yeah, that's not the, that's not the issue. The, the issue is always, as long as you have the people who are young, um, who are interacting with others, they're going to interact with grandma. That would be limited. That's the whole point. I mean, is, is, is not to say. Uh, how are you going to, you... how are you going to do that though? Like what, what, do you what mean, policy you are you going to implement? Quite easily. If you're a six, yeah, if you're in that age, what do you mean? If you're in that, if you're in that position, then you make sure that you self-isolate. Uh, you saying, how are you going to reinforce it for those that don't want to? Yeah. Well, well, I'm saying out of that group of people, they've it's got to take. Yeah, but the, the, here's, here's so many. You know. 
I, yeah, there's a lot of problems. But then, you're, so, but then that wait, goes against on, your argument because you're I'll, asking to do that for everyone. So how does that yes, work? Yes, of course. Of course. Okay, because it takes less resources to do it for everyone than to have everyone pull no. out their ID and prove that they're under 65 when they get well, stopped in order to do difficult. it. No, I disagree. Just, so, Avery, what does. do you mean by contribute? Because that could be like uh, defined multiple ways. Does that mean um, sure. as a part of the workforce or does investment count? Yeah, exactly. 65 year olds and plus are more likely to have, uh, you know, investment in, in companies that themselves are um, dependent on workers under the age of 65 to be there in order to okay, make profits. So, the money that they, they contribute is actually more tied up with um, non-physical contribution than it would be for the people under that age group. So okay, there... I, okay. So, we, we, I, I would just need the number. Again, like we're making a lot of, we're making claims. I need, I need numbers on GDP contribution. And we can do that in terms of, we can stratify it in terms of being part of the workforce. We can stratify it in terms of being part of the, we can, in, in terms of just being, um, being tied up in well, investment. Well, asking for evidence. I understand you asking I, for evidence, yeah. but but yeah. the point being is that these, you know, these arguments are being raised, you know, with with sort of the idea that you know they're fairly self evident. It's not necessary for me to perhaps produce graphs and evidence of something that would seem to be obvious. You you gave us the numbers, and then when I asked you the definition of the numbers yeah. you gave, you're telling us to give the. That evidence of the definition. Well, wait, wait, wait. The contention, the contention. No, oh, I, I don't know. I answered the question. I said I'm not sure. I'm uh, if you, the claim is being made. All I need to do to contend to to dis to contend with the claim is to ask for evidence. That's all I need to do. I'm not making the the claim the other way. I'm saying okay. Well, based on this metric, which I'm which and could be what, combined, oh, it could be. One second. I'm watching wait, this one guy's stream. Is this a movie? <laughs> Okay. Is, can uh, someone can, please mute? Yeah, yeah can guys, mute guys, can we can we mute can we mute the people who are just like saying irrelevant things? So again, so what I said is I initially came in and said, okay, well, wait a minute. If you're saying old the elderly are not contributing to the economy, like to whatever degree, to whatever this whatever degree that, um, and yes, I don't know if it's in terms of investments versus in terms of being part of the workforce, but what we share the, the combined or whichever one it is is for 50 year olds and older is 40 percent of the gdp now if we want to say 65 i don't know the answer to that i don't know and i don't also don't know if their if their contribution to the gdp if their contribution to the gdp being in investments ends up having this uh different status and different downturn i would need to see an analysis for that if just eliminating all of those uh, people who have these investments in companies uh, what economic downstream effects that's going to have. Um, again, if, if someone wants to make the claim that all these bad economic things are going to happen, um, I, I just need some sort of, some sort of analysis for that. Or actually, it's more specifically, if someone wants to claim that the elimination of people 65 and over uh, on, this, on this scale is not going to have um, drastic economic consequences, the case really does need to be made for that is what i would say it, and it can't just be just the intuitive speculation that it's it's gonna well they're out and out of the workforce they're not in the workforce i don't know it's that not intuitive, just though. it's not intuition well no because it well it that's clearly intuitive and nothing more because you have all these people who are having a lot of money tied up in in, in industries and in businesses that makes a, the difference that means a lot that's i don't logical, know that means intuition so if someone dies wait, wait, that wait, has wait, an wait, investment, wait, wait. Logical, then what logical. happens? Then what yeah, happens? That I, money, that money goes know. down to other people. It doesn't leave the economy. I don't know yeah. what happens. Okay, yes, but that doesn't answer the question of what economic impact that has. I don't. Again, like you're not leaving. It's not leaving the economy. If if young people die, you can make that same case for young people dying. It's not going to leave the economy. Their, not if, their, not their money is also going to go to the. People. If they're workers, they're, we're actually losing the value of their labor. But Avi, like, isn't yeah, isn't the main issue with this, is, like, um, the entertaining of this in a certain way? And I I don't know exactly how this was proposed initially. Um, is is this a question of an examination of like, um, after putting forth our best efforts in order to save as many people as we can from this type of a virus? So what are the types of economic consequences we can expect if we have a high mortality rate for like those that are 55 and old 
Um, because what it sounds like was the initially proposed by like whoever had asked this to you was um like what what are what's like the min max consequence of how much should we shut down the economy or what kind of economic impact should we be willing to to like put these people at less risk in order to die i think like this is a non-starter for me in the first place um for pe- for people that like want to weigh these types of things because like even if like this group of people was nothing but an economic burden it was not it wasn't producing any of our gdp like how our society chooses to treat those that are the most vulnerable and exposed to something is like a determining factor of like what are the values and like um like um like good of our society as a whole um to, to yeah the point, like, i, I is, agree is this, this is, even worth like entertaining yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, the, it's the... it's it's I, I like i like hitting yeah i agree so the, it's it does seem like it was like okay over long lines of okay well you know if it was you know if all those old people die you know hey i mean the it's, at least it's not going to harm our economy right like our economy so you know but i mean yes so one point one point of response which i would say is like holy shit like that's that's like um, i would consider that a very evil response um but yeah, the but other evil point and is economic that, outcomes are not the same i understand that that's why it's a different angle of response anyway um so the other point of response is that you can attack it on the level of economics itself and so for example for people over 65 what i'm just reading now is just like that the people who are part of our workforce who are 65 and over have been increasing there's a steady trend to increase from um in 1995 it only started 2.4 percent as far as 2012 it was 4.6 percent i'm not sure what percentage of it is now all i know is that people are retiring later and later and there's a greater and greater proportion of our workforce that are made up by 65 year 65 plus people who are 65 plus who do have a very significant uh case fatality rate you are going to lose workers um yes it's proportionate in terms of proportions it'll be less than other age groups but yes you will lose workers and i just don't know how that's going to affect the economy in terms of how many are lost um so i i can't see this argument going through like okay well you know it's going to be the the best thing for the economy here is going to be to just let the virus run rampant or try to just isolate the 65 year old or try to um a lot of this is very very speculative and there's not a lot of analysis to this and this is the kind of the kind of analysis really needs to be done the same let me put it this way the same rigor of analysis needs to be done on the economic side as is being done on the epidemiology on the virology side in terms of how we're weighing the cost of human life here. If you so want if to make I found an economist who said that this is going to be bad for the economy, would you believe it? No, because I'm not just like, I, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't believe someone just because they're a virologist. I would need to see the argument. If they develop, if they develop a valid argument, sure. Um, Anyone? arguments stand on their own two feet, not other people making them. How come um, when I make yeah, the so, argument with intuition, but when an economist mm-hmm. makes the argument, I was going to stand on its own two feet. Because no, again, no, whoa, 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 that's not so strong. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. I don't have strong in me. So, wait, 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 wait. So, no, again, I'll, I'll just repeat it again because it doesn't seem to be like you're tracking. So, when it's whether something is intuition or not, um, or whether it's empirically based, depends on whether it's empirically based or not. It's, it's not whether someone is an economist or whether someone's a virologist or whether someone's a doctor. Um, that's why I don't want anyone here to take my intuitions for anything other than my intuitions. Am I presenting data or am I not presenting data? It doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter if they're an expert or not. What really, what really matters is if they're making valid arguments. Now it happens to be when we have very little time to mull over data and when we have to make emergency situations, that's a different story. Fine. Yes, we trust. I, I would like the experts in the economy to get together with the experts in virology and the doctors and get them all together and figure and weigh things out, which seems to be what's trying, at least trying to be done. Um, but if we want to talk in the philosophical sense in terms of whether something is valid or not, no, I'm not going to take an argument and say, okay, well, that's not, in, not intuition just because it's a economist or a virologist or whatnot. The arguments for, stand for, on their own two feet, not on the people making them. For me, like a really easy, like non-starter, 
um, of, of, of assessing someone's arguments on is uh, this is a health issue with economic consequences, not an economic issue with health consequences, right? And like we've watched over the last several weeks, people start to walk this back repeatedly where like the, the primary concern is of the economic outcome as opposed to the primary concern being of the number of people that this will affect and like the healthcare institutions that will have to deal with this and, and how many people will die and suffer. Right. Like th I, I don't understand how um, people still think that like unemployment and, and certain other economic issues are, are as of right now, like the thing that you should be the most concerned about. Yeah. Uh, the other, the other thing. Um, okay. So wrapping up the, um, the argument that um, we would have these devastating, uh, part of the argument that we would have these devastating economic consequences, that the economic consequences would have um, a mortality rate associated with them. Now, I'm not going to refute the morbidity or the starvation, um, but I would contend with the mortality claim. And the evidence for that, I'll just post this in debate evidence. Um, we have a paper on what the mortality rate was actually in the Great Depression. And there's actually no evidence that even in the Great Depression that we saw an increase in a mortality rate. In fact, we actually had a bit of a dip in the mortality rate during the Great Depression. And this is true not just during the Great Depression, but during the, recess, the recessing periods compared to the years of strong... I want to make a quick point, a quick about the prior comment uh, about the uh, age is that um, ten, around 10 million of 157 million workers are 65 and older. So, so then as in, as of what date? This is in 2019. I posted it <laughs> according to the. It's in the U.S. According to the uh BLS and I posted it in debate discussion because that 10 out of one oh yeah so it, it is definitely increasing so we, it was at two percent then it was at four percent now what is that six percent six point three percent well I don't look at I've got the other ones I can look them up quick yeah you know, it's really because that, it was it was um nine uh around 9.7 million out of 155 million um, last year. Now it's 10 out of 157. Is that what you said? Yeah, uh, you can look in. Um, yeah, this is an increasing trend for sure. I mean, there's no question about it. I mean, it was in 19, nine, what, 1995, it was 2%. Uh, then 2012, it was 4%. Now, now it's about 6.3%. So we're, we're seeing an increasing and increasing um, representation of our elderly in the workforce. And this trend is only seeming to continue. So if people, um, these are people who people are retiring old later and later and we already have 10. Yeah. I mean, we have, yes, it's smaller in proportion, but yes, that's 10 million American workers that you have that are vulnerable here. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, to, I, this idea that we're not going to have any uh, significant economic consequences from this virus, if we just let it go or have these lax uh, restrictive measures is I, I, I'm not convinced of it. And I'm not convinced um, the reason I'm not convinced, well, there's a lot of reasons I'm not convinced about this whole, like, well, let's just take the old people and isolate them. Policies to enforce that are going to take significant, I don't, I can't see how that's not going to take significant more resources and be less enforceable than if we were to just I, have policies to isolate everyone or to just have lockdowns for everyone. Um, oh, so we also yeah. like have a bunch of good data about with Italy. Um, like, how do you go about locking down? shockingly people that young people that live with old people right like the the, the overlap of like, like the the types of quarantines that you're going to administer on a house by house basis and like what the standards are going to, um usually when you like mandate certain quarantine protocol uh like things that are have so much gray area uh end up being even less effective than they would be right if, like they 100%. were even less effective because they're just confusing yeah, I mean, this is like the, such a basic point. Like, there, we have so many people who have grandparents, and they live they live with them. Like, what are you going to tell them not to not to interact with each other? Not to like this. Is, it's so highly unenforceable. It's highly there's so many ethical gray areas. There's so many 
policy gray areas that are going to have to be made. There's so many questions of how you would actually enforce this compared to just, hey, everyone stay in your house or hey, like here's your time to go to the grocery store. Like, these things are, we need simple things that are able to be implemented quickly and effectively. Like, I don't understand. I heard, I heard one of it was from like um, so, some of the physicians I'm related to like my work uh, were advocating for, for fucking Brooklyn. Like, like that you were going to like quarantine the old people of Brooklyn away from the young people of Brooklyn. And it's like, <laughs> do, what? Like, do you understand? Like, like people live with their parents till they're fucking 35 in a bunch of these zip codes. Like if ever, and it's just like brownstones being handed down generation the to generation. Amount, I honestly think you would probably have more uprising and a people trying to implement something like that than trying to just lock everyone in their houses. It's just like, Imagine like pull t- rounding up everyone's grandma and grandpa and taking them away from them. Well, the you, so I work, you could I do work it by family. Of subic- if there's one so. in your, if there's an older person in your household, then everybody in that household is on lockdown. So in my network of um, the the healthcare network that I work in, um, we have there's like, a lot of so problems have, with that. We have too, seven right. subacute rehabs. Okay. There's problems with um, everything. Just saying, there's no, a lot but of there's problems. a lot more, need, more problems. More, no, 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 no. But more, more so, more so than the, than the simpler solution. So when New York, when, solution. when when New York men that to all the subacute rehabs to close their doors to all visitors, people lost their fucking mind. There was like several fights that broke out in the lobbies of these places when people were told like they couldn't see their mother and father um, that are like in like a uh, like a long term care facility or even just like in a, a temporary stint like a subacute. Like well, shockingly, when you take like 90 year old parents and you say like they're also very elderly children. And like no, you can't have contact with them. Um, people start to behave really fucking irrationally really quickly. Well, actually, again, uh, and again here, I just want to respond to this earlier. Really like doing it by household is just crazy. You would have to take an eno- you'd have to do a whole census. You'd have to take an enormous amount of resources to find out who has an elderly person in their house and who doesn't. Which young person is tied to an uh, elderly person in the household and who does not? It would t- the amount of resources that was taken was just astronomical. Do you want to talk about economic burden? You would probably end up bankrupting the country doing that alone. It's also, just nuts. like, why is the bar being set here? Like, New York hasn't closed the fucking playgrounds yet. It's cra- like, no, it's crazy. Yeah. Wait, you guys haven't done that? that? No. Think about the Dutch. The yeah, trains are still be. running. The buses are still. Subways are still up. running, yeah. and and some of them are packed too. Some yeah, of the yeah. bus, those subways are packed. I walked, it's crazy. So I, I live. I, I walked the two not avenues, uh, three New York City blocks yesterday. I went to get fucking Chipotle. I walked over and then I walked back to my apartment. I'm not exaggerating with this number. I probably counted like 175 to 250 people, like. Like I saw a group of like twenty five kids fucking playing with each other in the park with the parents all standing. No one self quarantining here. Like n- not in any meaningful like ways that we absolutely need to. But here's yeah. the interesting thing about the Dutch, right? And the Swedes, uh, they've taken the approach of not trying to flatten the cur- the curve, but they want to achieve herd immunity. So they they are isolating the vulnerable. They're slightly increased death rates. But over the long term, we could get benefits, right? As time goes by, the other countries no, catch no, up over I don't a longer think... period. So, mm. like, no. here's some of the arguments. Reducing economic burden, too, and possibly reduce death rate on the long term. Dutch fitness level is also superior, however. And elderly yeah, are so most I... often not in their homes. Dutch people are treated as superior adults because chat. they behave like adults. Wait, Direct wait. Quote from the Dutch. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, no, this, the Sweden, like, et, look, again, we can spec. you can speculate that Sweden will have better outcomes in the long Dutch, term while they're dying at high, or, or, um, or the, okay, I'd have to look at that. But sweet, I, what I know is that the highest, Sweden and Denmark are right now have the highest death rates. Iceland, Norway, Estonia, and Finland have the lowest. Now, we can speculate that maybe because they'll have this strategy less, but everything we know, all the principles we know, is that you don't want to overload surge capacity. If you have this rush to herd immunity as quickly as possible, that is a terrible strategy. That's based on, no one disagrees with this. Every, okay. every modeling, does, yeah, every bit of modeling is very clear on this. I think it's, not uh, want that. it's kind of useless to bring up a mortality rate, though, without more context you, of like how but, many but, but, people are being tested. Here's my one question. Okay, though. wait, wait. The we Dutch can talk have, about the, that. have a okay. higher mortality rate. They do. They have a higher mortality rate. But here's the thing. 
uh, over time, the other countries are going to catch up. These guys are going to have a high mortality no, rate now. No, 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 no. If you look As at you... the, if you look at the trend, wait, wait. If you look at the trend again, I posted this in debate evidence. Yeah. If you look at the trend, it's not just that they have a. It's not just. It's not. It's not. Hey, I wasn't. Look, I was invited here to to be to be, to be a roundtable. Oh, uh, that means like, only you I'm can talk. Of, okay. No, no, no. It means yeah, like stop. I'm talking at one. Let, I'm. It means I'm talking to one at a time. You can. I can talk to you. I'll have a t chance to talk to you right now. I'm talking to this other person. If you want to talk to me after, you can have. You just wait your turn, buddy. It's okay. Anyway, um. Look, so if you look at Sweden and Denmark, it's not just that they have a higher mortality rate. It's that their growth of mortality rate is faster than Iceland, Norway, Estonia, and Finland. It's not just that the mortality rate is higher. It's, just, it's that it doesn't look like there's any inkling of Iceland, Norway, Estonia, and Finland touching their mortality rate anytime soon, ever catching up even, until they peak and plateau. It's gonna yeah, no, point. no, of course, it's not, at some point, but by that time, it, we would be over, you would, it, it's, look, it would, it, 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 it'll be over surge capacity, the concern is, there's no indication in any of the data that we have that Iceland, Norway, Estonia, and Finland are going to, in any meaningful way, surpass Sweden and Denmark until it were already past apex, and the, the amount that would otherwise have been would simply, would be different. Again, you need, you can't, overload surge capacity. Once you overload surge capacity, your mortality rate, no matter which country you are, your mortality rate skyrockets. That, that's the problem here. But they also have a superior health system, the Dutch say, to most Okay, so then you'd have to make it, then you can, then health. you'd have to make some, you'd have to have some, okay, so if they want to say that in Denmark, Sweden, they have higher surge capacity than Iceland, Norway, Estonia, and Finland, I need to see the data on that. Um, if they want to say like, oh, this is okay, it's okay for our death to be exponentially growing compared to all, all the other cases because we just have this crazily exponentially higher surge capacity. Um, okay, that's a claim that's interesting and worth exploring. Um, I'm skeptical at, uh, of that, uh, but I w I'm willing to be convinced that data is provided. Um, I wanted to ask a question, at least pertaining to the area of New York and pertaining actually to the argument of sure. economic downturn. If we've seen in situations where the where both the unemployment rate and economic downturn has gotten this bad within the city of New York, city of Chicago, at least during the Great Depression, would it not be possible to say that the the effects of these long term lockdowns and effects on the economic system could lead to similar crime rates that we saw during the Great Depression? Um, we okay. So yes and no. So again, this is a lot. A lot of this is speculative. So so. Again, you would need to, the, the speculations against that would be even in the criminals themselves, um, even with the criminals themselves, yes, there could very well be, especially if there's less policing going on, that there could be increased crime rates. The, uh, the counterpoint to that may be that criminals themselves would may be less, less likely to want to go out to areas where they're at risk of catching the infection as well. And so in this whole environment, this is a very different environment than the Great Depression where Yes, people are not doing well. There's not a, as much law enforcement, but people are still having some form of business going on. The shops are not closed. People are still making transactions. And there's not a pandemic in the air that, if that if lasts, that we're droplets last in the air for three plus hours that can get you severely sick. So well, were with you that kind of... That? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Go, girl. Finish up. Uh, yeah, so with, with that kind of environment, I'm not sure what kind of crime rate we would see look i'm sure it's po i'm sure it's possible we need look we need essential services we need police officers we need police force if you let this but all the more so if you let this coronavirus just go crazy it's going to police aren't immune to it they're going to be affected you're going to and especially if you have police police precincts where one per, one police officer gets it it spreads to a whole bunch of other police officers then they're in isolation what do you think is going to happen to the economy if you let that if you let that happen and then we have just a decreased capacity for police officers to arrest criminals. I mean, that happens if you just don't have quarantine systems either. It may happen more. I don't know. Well, the thing is, is like, I, I can't speak for the city of New York because I don't know anything about the city of New York. City of Miami here, if there was ever a call made pertaining to coronavirus, uh, the I believe it's what, if you're exposed to it, your guy has to go out for two weeks. That That's already on the books. Yeah. You know, we're doing it right now. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yep. That's right. The problem is that's apparently like the the person who I got that information from 
has been telling me the more that you try to maintain that policy, even if the exposure is minimal and you've got PPEs and everybody's like strapped down to the nines, you're going to end up overworking the system. Like how you guys have search capacity in hospitals, we have search capacity for public Stop service. Stop fucking clicking. Don't don't no. worry about the NYPD doing anything to like come in contact with people right now because they're fucking not. Um, they're, oh, they're, oh, the, the whole the whole the whole organization is like super like um. So as of right now, uh, testing and screening for um coronavirus for cops is voluntary. Um, and as a result of self-reporting of symptoms. And when you do get, like, um, a test positive, uh, you're basically just put on, like, paid leave, but your ability to then have things like overtime and, like, additional hours and additional pay is out the fucking window. So most of these people that have, like, mild symptoms just aren't even reporting it and aren't getting tested. Yeah, now that's right. that's true. The, if you're looking, but another parallel another symmetry breaker to the great depression look the great depression has lasted um years it's lasted quite some time and it's an ongoing thing and it's not it's something that affects um police the, the police force on an ongoing scale at this this thing will have an initial short-term impact but eventually police officers will develop immunity to it that's going to eventually happen and as police officers do develop immunity to it as especially when we have the serologic testings that come out to test whether someone has been exposed or not, has anti an antibody response to it and is able to go to work in, in this coronavirus pandemic, they, that will improve the situation as well. That's another symmetry breaker. I think it was because I might have, I think I might have misstated the question a little bit. It's more along the lines of since we're already reaching that level of economic downturn from the Great Depression, at least in terms of, um, at least in terms of unemployment rates. My question was more along the lines of if we get to a point where the economic downturn actually reaches that level, do you think feasibly speaking we can make the argument like how the app was arguing earlier today on the concept of um of long term lockdowns not having the most solvent outcomes, whether or not that actually could become a possibility? I, I don't know. I can only speak from like the civil service area. I want to get a medical professional's understanding on that. Yeah, I mean look, if Look, if you're asking if it's possible, sure, it's, anything is possible. Um, in terms, well, I'm asking well, all I can say, yeah, yeah, probable, probable, yeah. I, I, the answer is I don't know. What I can tell you is that we we have reasons to suspect that this this change in economic behavior will will change. This is not a, a permanent solution. Again, remember, there's a hammer and a dance. It's not like we're going to be doing this forever. We're gonna. It's not like we're going to be doing this. I don't even think we're going to be doing this for months. We're go in terms of the severe restrictions. Why don't you think we'll be doing this for months? Yeah, because well, and by this, just to be clear, I mean the more severe form of the restrictions. The dance okay, but comes why? after. Yeah. Well, we already we already. Why, got yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, because we because yeah because all the the models expect the peak to happen uh, within um, either in mid April to late April, and they expect that's where the apex happens, and then after that it will taper off. And then, and so, cool. And then the, we would the models half of that. have nothing to do with like how we quarantine. Yes, like well, just because do. we're past um, the doesn't mean we stop. Well, 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 no, no, no. Yes, we would, we would stop after. Yeah, I mean, look, I can pull it up now, and, and we, I can give you an answer real quick. Oh, okay. Um, IHME, okay. yeah, and to give you just the time frame of when we would, when I would at least, if I were, ma if I were like a dictator of this country managing things. So, in the United States. Um, if we look at the death rate, um, it's expecting the apex is expected to happen in April, April 16th. The cases, the death rate continues to drop uh, May. And then and then I, I would expect we can right we would reach this area again in May of our death rate where we are right now. So the other tail end around May 15th. And then we would reach where we were in, say, we would reach where we were in March 25th. That's probably around June 1st. So how old is that? No, this is currently, this is current. It's currently did, updated. Did you po it's post updated. It anywhere? Oh yeah. I'll post it in, um, I'll post it in debate evidence. Sure. So I've, uh, I've talked about this with like a couple of people. Um, and like, uh, I have some knowledge of it, but, but there is some, 
Um, one of the issues of that I have with like the, the the flattening of the curve meme and like the the case fatality rates of of, of the U.S. and and where we are on our on our ride to the apex. Um, do you think that like I think that if when you remove New York and the tri-state area, um, and you treat that as like uh, the same way that you would treat Italy, right? Like literally, it's like a different fucking country. Um, and you look at the timelines of when your major infections were starting to occur in like certain cities versus when it was occurring in New York. Um, I really don't like this, like treating the entire United States as curve and, and apex point as something that's uniform. Um, my big fear and what I think is, is that what you're seeing in New York is what you're going to see in Miami in a few is what you're going to see. That's in true. Yeah, no, I, I agree. What, yeah. Like I, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I completely agree. So yes, in reality, so I, yes, I was giving my answer. I was giving was a summation of the United States as a, a summated average of everything. But yes, if we talk about New York, yes, I think we're going to be able to lift restrictions on New York earlier than we're going to be able to lift restrictions on some other places because they're just going to get through the apex faster and their the cases are going to come down faster. Sure. So and why are we going to move in from the hammer to the dance and stop quarantine? I didn't say that. I said one, not just when we're past the apex. I would say once we're past the apex and we continue past the apex down and the cases go down to, say, some th- specified threshold of surge capacity, we can stop the hammer part of the quarantine. So, Whether that's 5% of surge capacity or 10% of surge capacity, we can have the specified threshold for that. So my super doomer take on this is... I think that when, like you said, um, the apex is going to hit sooner in New York than it does in other places, and and we're going to be able to like loosen restrictions. Um, my like belief is that when that begins to happen, um, because every time we talk about this and every time this is reporting on, we keep treating the United States as like one giant summation. Pl- um, that the behavior in other places that aren't at that point yet is going to change and quarantine is going to be modified um, to the point where like we are going to hit surge capacity and we are going to have like yeah, major no, overflow yeah. issues. Um, yeah, and, and as long yeah. as we keep treating this as something that's like one big problem as opposed to 50 big problems. Um, I, I, I agree. We're gonna, I agree completely. We're going to go anywhere and go. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree completely. And, and again, it's the, the dance part is going to be a, a different transition points from the hammer to the dance from different states, state by state, area by area, um, rather than just having uh, an implementation uh, universally throughout the United States. Yes, it's going to be far more effective to have different um, policies through different states, although some some universal policies may be very beneficial, like like I, like the, in the hammer phase, you need to really just to, to lock everything down until you really get are able to transition to the that dance period where you are able to lax the restrictions and implement them as needed in different areas, target them, um, et cetera. Because yeah. here's what I don't understand about any of this stuff, right? Everyone's like, well, once the curve is over, then we're over the curve. But that doesn't make any sense to me because That's not there's what's a being great number here. of the population, there's a great number of the population that hasn't been infected yet. And when they get infected, okay. and if we all start going out in public, yep, we're I, I, all I understand what you're now. saying. So I, wait, yep. can you stop talking over me? I'm not done yet. So, so once they all start going in public, here. that's going to be a problem, right? <laughs> so yep. can we, we a, get can we get a mute on um, oh, who's this? Who's this guy? Um, Atheist uh, Hillary Hillary it, it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we just get a mute on I, him? I, no, I no, no, not you, not you, not you, not you. Very important. No, 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 no. But I did have a question, right? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Just, just real quick, real quick. I did not. I just want to clarify. First of all, I never said I was important. Um, but just no, quick, I understand. I that never you said. Are. I'm t- I'm, I, I, I never. I never. I never said um, that once the curve is over, then that's it. I know I, that you're not of saying. Course that. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. So once we get over the curve, though, if there's a bunch of people, because we've only got like a million infections, right? We got 300 million people. So all of these people could eventually get infected unless we have some way of preventing it. And my understanding is the only way to really prevent it is to get people low enough so that we can test all the people who need to go to work. So my yeah, understanding yeah, is so the economic restrictions don't stop until that point. Well, they can be, it's not like an on and off switch. There's, can be, there's, you, there's a gradual lax- relaxation on it. So there's going to be, whatever response you have, there's always going to be some amount of herd immunity that's going to prevent the spread from going up as fast as last time. 
There's also going, the issue also is that even if it starts going up once you control the number of cases, it it's only becomes a concern if you're seeing it overwhelm surge capacity. So even if you do relax restrictions and it starts up, R starts increasing over one again, it's only going to overwhelm, it's only going to be problematic if wow, this is really going up so fast that it, it's anticipated to overwhelm surge capacity because that's when the mortality rate starts really changing. So that's, that's okay. It's gonna, look, it's going to happen. We're going to get it. The idea is not to get it in such a way, in such a manner such that we, have a, we all have a much likely, more likely percentage of dying if we get it in that manner. Because look, I'll tell you right now, if we overwhelm surge capacity, it doesn't matter I mean, it, it will matter how old we are, but even you'll start seeing numbers, even for the young population, that will start uh, increasing. The mortality, the mortality rates for all these age groups, they're not fixed numbers. So when you see this by mortality rate by age group, and you see, oh, the mortality rate is really low for these young people, that's not a fixed number. If you overwhelm the surge capacity of the hospital, that mortality rate is going to go up. And it's going to go up. There's no reason to believe it wouldn't go up substantially. If you can't, for, even if they're young. I don't know if they're going to so, release yeah. this yet. So the like, question is for young people like us. Uh, yeah, sure. stupid, stupid question, but uh, would I would someone like us get would it be like a mild disease? Would it be just like how bad how how how, how fucked would, would, would you or I be if we got it? It's like ordinary young people. Yeah, so it, it depends. Um, some people may ha get it and be asymptomatic. Some young people can get it and be symptomatic, but not require hospitalization. Some young people will be symptomatic and require hospitalization. Actually, a good proportion of young, good uh, amount of hospitalizations are actually from young people. Yeah. I think it's approximately 40% of hospitalizations are actually not the elderly. And so my, so I think, though, so like, so my question you, is, it would be similar to influenza in, term, in terms of where it can be severe, but at no. the same time... It, 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 it no, I, I don't think this is anywhere, anywhere comparable to influenza on any, any, not even in the ballpark of influenza. For any for for the vast age groups, actually, I don't but, think this is this kisses the feet. Uh, I don't think influenza kisses the feet of this thing. My question is, um, as far as um, you know, they say vaccines take like a year, maybe or whatever. You know, maybe it's the longest to develop and test and all that. Do you think um, just the natural immunity that we eventually our bodies um, uh, will build from getting it um, will be far greater beneficial than just everyone just kind of. Mm -hmm trying to wait around for a year or so, whatever it is, for a vaccine. I mean, do you think the natural immunity uh, or, you know, the natural way of, of handling the virus is better than just everyone relying upon some kind of drug company to make a vaccine? Yeah, so two things to that. So we're going to be developing natural immunity when we, even with these lockdown, if with lockdown procedures, we would be developing natural immunity. The people yeah. who are going to get infected are going to get infected without natural immunity. When we relax the restrictions, people, more people will get infected, and they will also develop natural immunity. As this process goes on, as this dance goes on, you'll see a greater and greater percentage of the population getting natural immunity. And the idea is, as that happens, you will see a lower rebound of this virus after restrictions are lifted because a, more, a greater and greater amount of your population, as you're doing this, has natural immunity. Then the eventual end game is the vaccine. And or a treatment or uh, or just eventually just natural immunity fixates in the population, whichever comes first. So you don't need a vaccine in order to get there. Um, vaccine development. You're right. It absolutely is correct. You will take approximately a year, if not more, to develop it. There are reasons for that. And those reasons are not due to a supply chain. They're due to intrinsic uh, time duration for testing of the vaccine. Um, so the again. It's not necessarily, but here's the, here's the thing I want to stress. What we should not be doing, though, is we shouldn't be rushing for the, all the population to get herd immunity. The, the bad idea to do here is to say, okay, well, we don't want to wait a year. Let's all rush to get herd immunity at the same time. The you, problem with that, it, I can't say it enough times, the problem with that is the mortality rate skyrockets when you do that because you're overwhelming surge capacity. Do you have a medical background, if I might ask? You sound like someone who probably has some, some, yeah. some level of... Yeah, I'm a medical doctor. Oh, interesting. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, doctor, is that you, Luke? Is, is that you? Like, aren't you the guy we had AMA with earlier? No, no, it's not Lou. We have another doctor that no. gets on this every now. That's not Lou. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, okay, Dr. Avi, I have a question uh, regarding uh, some of the, your younger patients that you've been treating. Uh, okay, so when you look at the cohort of patients that are hospitalized, um, either on a general medical ward or in the ICU for uh, COVID-19, um, are there any patterns that you can detect in terms of uh, pre-existing conditions or risk factors such as, you know, a history of asthma, history of vaping use, uh, smoking, <laughs> anything else? Or does it seem to be relatively random when we're talking about uh, patients under the age of 50 who are hospitalized for COVID-19? Yeah, in terms of uh, requiring ICU care, in terms of mortality rate, there are several things that stand out. Um, in terms of car in terms of premorbid conditions, uh, cardiovascular disease stands out, diabetes, um, COPD, yes, lung lung conditions absolutely. Um, another thing that is thought to be standing out, um, and this is not as clear of a signal, but it's starting to come up as a signal, is obesity. So uh, people who have obesity, um, there's some evidence to suggest that they have a, a higher chance of having a higher mortality rate and a requirement for ICU or for critical care. I think it's too early to uh, do that. How they did? No, it's not. We have really good numbers it's on. It's not. It's not too early. And, I, and I'm sure it's not based on age. In that case, it's more. You could be 30 and have all those things, and probably be just as. Yes. Up. In New York, 60. In New York, out of five facilities in Manhattan, 64 percent of ICU beds are currently filled with COPD patients or patients experiencing obesity, hypoventilation syndrome-like symptoms How with respiratory are, failure. Huh? So COPD patients are going to be older right off the bat. Right, obesity have ventilation COPD, syndrome. Right, um, so obesity have ventilation syndrome. Is this syndrome virus airborne? You, yes, kind of. Um, huh? you, so um, obesity have ventilation syndrome patients tend to be a little bit older, um, but it, it, it really is just about BMI. What would you say to my... Uh, uh, the next question wait, 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 wait. Jeez, um, what would you say to my idiot friends who say something like this is caused by 5G? No, I would say <laughs> that is the, yeah, so the, the response to anyone who says 5G that causes cancer or causes this disease, about this. Um, point, point, point out, just point out to those people that 5G is non-ionizing radiation. Just show them a wavelength spectrum. Show them an electromagnetic radiation spectrum. Show them where visible light is. Show them where 5G is. Show them where the radio waves are. Um, and show them where electro, where ionizing radiation begins in terms. So ionizing radiation begins at a given frequency, and it requires a greater frequency and a shorter wavelength than 5G. Um, it's actually you're actually where it lines up on the electromagnetic wavelength spectrum. You're actually more likely to damage DNA um, with visible light than you are with 5G. So the, po the point is that electromagnetic radiation is damaging when it can ionize. When it can ionize DNA, that's when it can cause problems. You're actually more likely to ionize your DNA um, by just having visible light around than 5G. Uh, in either case, neither are harmful. Um, there's no evidence 5G causes any of this. Yeah, and 5G uses less power. There's less, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a bunch of, just, my life. it's a bunch of distributed nodes. Um, the only like it, like right now, if you were to get a climb a uh, cell tower and to lean up against uh, uh, the antenna and all that, that might be dangerous, right? But no one's really no one's doing that. No one's, it, you know, it, that's where the danger is. The five G uses less power. Remember, I'm not, I'm, it's I'm, more I'm, distributed. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, binary. I'm actually surprised you're not anti five G. Like to be honest with huh. you. Huh. I mean, you, you, I, you're, I work you're anti vax with, and you're anti vax, and this is like I'm, I'm surprised you're not you're not anti five G. Oh, well, that's interesting. Wait, why are you uh, into that? Uh, uh, okay, Dr. Avi, I have another question for you. Um, okay, so uh, for the ICU patients that, you, uh, that you've seen, uh, what, are, what, what have you found to be like the best pharmacological interventions with critical patients? This is a really, really complicated question, and this is the question everyone wants to know because uh, there's a lot of experimental drugs. Are you talking about hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, chloroquine? Are you talking about tocilizumab, the, the ones that are, are being investigated? Uh, yeah, any of those or all of them. Or like, um, like, what are you finding in your experience when you're managing those patients in the ICU? Like, uh, wh what are the best, uh, I guess, treatment protocols? Here's, I, I know there aren't like randomized controlled trials or studies for all yeah, this Yeah, here's what I can tell you. Here's, 
Here's yeah, where like, I can what tell you. you found to be effective, or like the, uh, not effective, but yeah. like what's the best yeah. treatment? Modality? So I can, I, I can, I've actually spoken to several intensivists um, on this who uh, deal with the ICU. Uh, they run the ICU actually in several different hospitals, and what I can tell you is that there's a issue. It, the issue doesn't seem to be the virus itself that's causing the problem. It seems to be that the immune system goes into something called cytokine storm, which essentially the immune system, because it's activated by this virus, actually the immune system is robust enough to actually destroy the own, your own body. And even if patients ne are not necessarily desatting, they're not necessarily dropping in oxygen, what is seen is that they end up going into cytokine storm and getting cardiomyopathy or getting thrombosis, which is clotting in blood. And so what they're putting them on, they're putting them on anti on anticoagulation. Um, they're they're also using sometimes, some uh, institutions are using something called tocilizumab, which is an interleukin-6 inhibitor. It's trying to reduce part of that cytokine storm. Um, <clears throat> as far as hydroxychloroquine, uh, yes, a lot of people are using hydroxychloroquine. There's a lot of variable responses. I'm sure you're going to get some doctors say, oh, yeah, this is looking like it's working. Other, other doctors are going to be like, oh, no, I put all my patients on this, and, they, and they're dropping like flies. I can personally tell you that I had one patient who, um, got uh, developed uh, COVID-19, was put on hydroxychloroquine, and his hospital course worsened, and he required to be intubated, and he's in the ICU. Uh, so we don't actually know until the trials come out. There are several poorly done trials, one um, from France and one from China on hydroxychloroquine. Neither of those provide us a lot of confidence either way. The WHO is running several larger trials on hydroxychloroquine. Hopefully that'll give us uh, more information. Um, I have a question. Those. So, uh, the doctor, uh, Wait, I'm how, sorry, I couldn't hear what someone else said. I, I wanted to wonder if I could be a, if I could potentially be would be a wise decision, basically be a guinea pig for these types of trials because I kind of would, would like to do something to help help get effective treatments out of it. If, if, if that's a wise idea. You, if you're interested, you can go to clinicaltrials.gov. And you can you can check any uh, currently recruiting clinical trial there for uh, COVID nineteen. They do need even if you don't have COVID nineteen, you may be able to be eligible to be a participant as someone who doesn't or like a healthy control or something, depending on how the trial is structured. So I would encourage you to go to that website, um, clinicaltrials.gov, and search for um, uh, SARS CoV two or COVID nineteen. Uh, okay, Doctor, I've got two more questions left. Uh, I think uh, they should be pretty. Cool. Quick. Uh, okay, the next question is, I read an article in Business Insider that um, uh, that uh, some places like on CT scans, you can uh, kind of see a ground glass appearance in the lungs uh, going towards the periphery. Um, is that diagnostic or useful in a clinical setting? Have you, have you used that at all? I mean, ground glass opacities, I, I get it, they just are on the periphery, but ground glass opacities themselves are a nonspecific finding. We are starting to see this kind of finding where ground glass opacities are, um, are found on the periphery. That's, again, I don't know how specific or, or not that is. This is. We're still developing, and I'm not sure if we can just hang our hat on this or not. Uh, ultimately, we're just going to hang our hat on the test. Uh, I, wouldn't look, I wouldn't look at a patient having ground class opacities on the periphery and saying, oh, they have COVID-19. Like, if that's your question, like, no. Um, yeah. Uh, it, just, is, it is starting to develop as something that we do see, though. Uh, okay, cool. And then the last question I had was just a very simple one. Uh, would you recommend um, uh, people who are just going out in the public to wear um, a face mask? And if so, what? Yeah, so the answer is actually yes. Um, people who are going out to public, I would recommend them to wear a face mask, a non-medical grade face mask, as, as the CDC now recommends. Um, <clears throat> so, the, so the WHO actually re didn't recommend it. Uh, CDC now does recommend it. The reason for it is because the great purpose of the face mask is to prevent you uh, from spreading it to others. Uh, and we know that you can transmit this while you are, um, while you are asymptom while you are asymptomatic. <laughs> please, 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 please. Dude, you guys got to be quicker. I was in a game and I was still the one that had to do it. Like, there's got to be a mod that's paying attention. I'm sorry, I'm on mobile. Okay. Tried it. I I call. That was an epic gamer moment. Wait a minute. I had a five minute mute for a D okay. Okay. Let me just let me just get this. Um. Let's get this guy. Um.
so this this guy who thinks who's pinging me um what's his case that i don't know something because he doesn't know mortality rates related to mouth testing of course mortality rate of course that's not true of course i understand mortality rates related to mouth testing um yeah i don't know actually you I mean, if he has a coherent point to make, um, let him make it. But it seems like he's just trolling at this point. Um, I don't know. And I, I'm not sure why. Um, but okay, I don't know what he's scared about. Anyway. What channel is that um, like? This really is not a good time to troll. Oh, a debate discussion. Yeah, I, I guess it's a good is time to troll. Is there some reason sure. I can't see debate he's, discussion? He's not trolling. This is just how he is. Oh, oh let me. He has the worst taste. Wait, what? I, I'm, oh, I'm he's just like a, a personality in the server or something? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Who is this guy? Oh, okay, the, cool. Yeah, him yeah, atheist yeah. for the cause. Oh, atheist for the cause. Oh, yeah, that makes total sense. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so if he, <laughs> it's just him. like, uh... okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if he's just one of those characters you guys have. All right. Um, okay, just to wrap up on math. Um, so the issue, the only caveat to that is that we don't currently have, we, that we are having a shortage of personal protective equipment for medical professionals. So uh, we are re uh, recommending that. Um, non-medical grade masks are used in the public, whether that's a handmade uh, something or some kind of silk or cloth mask or cotton mask or something. Anything is better than nothing. If you're talking about coughing and drop, droplets are coming out of your mouth, um, getting through those tortuous fibers, even if it's not medical grade, it was better than nothing. Hopefully we can get the medical grade uh, surgical mask production um, or importing uh, to a degree where we have a shortage and the public can wear uh, higher grade masks when they go out. But yes, the answer is if you do have a mask, um, then yes, uh, I would recommend you wear the mask when you go outside. And watch so, a hey, YouTube video on how to properly put a mask on. Right? So you, are you telling me that lift and size are a lot of cytokines that stop people? Is that like, what's the percentage of that? People dying? Wait, uh, in terms of people who are going into cytokine storm, are you saying? Yeah. How are they? Oh, are they if they're going into cytokine storm, they're probably going to be in intensive care. Yeah, the, 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 it's high. Um, uh, you're talking about people who are in IC, who are in uh, requiring care for the ICU. People, so I'll just actually post. Talking about people yeah, people who are in COVID cytokine COVID storm are, are cytokine storm. typically, yeah, those people are typically patients you would see in the ICU. They're not oh, like yeah. patients you would see like, oh, like I'm just walking around like, no, there's, that's how people get really ill. Okay. Um, and we can compare the rates. I'll actually post this into debate. Evidence. I never heard of that. Concept. Have you seen the uh, Have you seen the melatonin shit? What melatonin? Stuff? I, I have. I have not. Uh, there's melatonin. um, it, it's like a lot of the other like similar drugs. Um, basically, the idea of like the the inflammation um, response and exactly what you're talking about that, that that the body ends up like doing most of the damage based on its visceral response to the virus as opposed to like the actual um, impact of the virus. Um, and they're finding that like high dosages of melatonin has been having some like pretty decent, um, or, you know, uh, positive effects to it, but it, it's still pretty early. The, uh, the uh, hydroxychloroquine, um, so you're going to see some cool numbers um, probably at the end of this week that like it, it does seem to be working pretty fucking well now that they've kind of adopted the correct protocols of, of who to be giving it to and when to be giving it to people. There was like yeah. several places in New York up until four or five days ago um, that protocol for hydroxychloroquine was prescribing it post intubation exclusively, which kind of defeats the whole fucking point of like giving someone hydroxychloroquine in the first place. Yeah, it's interesting about the melatonin. Actually, I was getting my, my girlfriend, she'd never really taken it, but she was having trouble she sleeping. sleeping. She works she in the medical field, um, and I was getting her to take it more. So it's interesting. You know, if she does get exposed, I don't know. Like, not, that does not, help. not these types of doses. Um, like, the, the, it's the high, melatonin high, high doses dose. are like not like, um, you know, three milligram, like, go yeah, to yeah. sleep type shit. You're talking what, higher, what like, about, take, uh, take a bunch of hundreds. Hundred, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me find it. So, yeah, there was a there was a couple of cool like, as you said, yeah, a lot of the studies we're still getting are pretty pretty trash. Will, will high amounts of crystal meth help prevent yes. COVID? Yes, because we'll you can literally you, you can flex the they virus out any. of your body through sheer will. Bro, if you're well, if you're actually ripped, you can just straight up flex the virus without the meth. So, you're, so you're, the you said you're like an internist, or what, what's like your what's your clinical? Thought? 
Yeah, my clinical focus is actually is actually research um, in in dermatology of all things. Although I'm being redeployed to uh, oh, you like take care of corona, coronavirus patients. Um, I just want to see what this um, um, if this thing can be spelled out to me. I don't think it's correct, but I think it's being brushed out. I hope you give him the correct answer. He's appealing to the fact that when we currently only test dying people and such unhealthy users, he's appealing to say if we tend to test into the general population, we're tired of them. Okay, yes, I do have a response to that. Um, yeah, so. Okay, so yeah, I wasn't clear that, okay, so this person who isn't clear at talking at all, it seems to just be trolling atheists for the cause. If you're, what you're saying is that, um, if the claim is that if we were to just test everyone, then we would see a lower mortality rate because what we're just doing is we're not testing everyone, we're only testing the people who are coming in who are more ill. Um, this fails on several levels. So one of the levels it fails on is, yes, it is true that if you test people, um, oh, he seems to be saying that's a different. Bryn, I'm not sure if you're actually representing, but I'll respond to what the, that you're saying anyway. Yeah. 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 Sure. Sure. Yeah. Bring him. Yeah. Bring him on. Bring him. Bring him on. Um, uh -oh. If what is his contention? A dragon man. Um, Probably that his name is atheist for cause. Just gonna. Yeah. yeah, so what what is the what's the contention that you what's the is the specific Maybe you're contention? fucking retard. You Stop. don't even know okay, that that's the, the what's the contention? You don't even know that the mortality rate of what's the coronavirus the is tied to how much testing is done because they test people who are sicker and uh and, and when they're rationing and the more they open up the testing to people who are less sick or more likely to live, the more the mortality rate goes down, which is why okay, in the I'm United States, the mortality argument. rate yep. was over 2%, and now it's like 1.3%. Okay, so I'm very familiar. I'm actually very familiar with what you're describing. He um, loves voice. It's actually a very, very basic... Um, he, he, he I call them... He's still oh, okay. listening. Oh, why is... Why did he leave? Um, because he does this show. because, he, because he's a retard. Yeah. So what, so what Wait, is he? Does he want to? Uh, does he want okay. to? Just get the echo. Bro. So, so, so this is like one of those like slam dunk gotcha attempt type things. So what, he does. So what was his um? What was yeah, yeah, I'll, like I'll explain. I'll story. explain. This is something I call. So first of all, the, the first case, um, the first thing I'll mention is that, um, in regards to his claim, if you look at the, um, cases, what you also want to look at, you want to look at closed cases. difference between closed cases and open cases, but reg getting or regardless of that, um. His, this is what I call a basic bitch point. Um, people think, come in and think they're saying something intelligent when they make the point that, I'll explain to you what it is. So the idea is that we are only testing the sick. Um, people, we're rationing our tests. We're only testing the people who come into the ER or who have severe enough symptoms in order to warrant the test. And because of this, if we were to actually expand the testing and test, other, and test people all around, um, what we would be capturing people who would be asymptomatic, for example, and would test positive, and then the overall mortality rate would go down. So the deaths divided by the, the, the deaths of people who test positive divided by the total amount of people who test positive is what we're going off of. But if we're only testing the ill, we are artificially getting a higher than what we would have mortality rate. That's his argument. Um, so, I, so, so I his, complete, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, so, so, his so argument. So his argument is that we're artificially getting a higher mortality number because we only test those who actually display symptoms. Yes, exactly. That yeah, is, does everyone under I can understand. Yeah. That is yeah. dumb. Yeah, you know, it is dumb. And I, we'll, but we have, we'll go through. We'll go through why. Intuitively, it makes sense to some people. We'll go through why. It, it, we'll go through why it's wrong, um, and why it is dumb. Okay, so the problem with the problem with that is is that actually, believe it or not, that speculation not only doesn't result may not result in an Overest in a overestimation of mortality rate. If you actually did test everyone, you actually may find that your current estimate is actually underestimating, and we'll go go through why. Because what people always focus on the denominator being missed cases, but they actually don't consider that you may actually be missing numerator cases. Numerator cases being missed deaths. So, for example, uh, nursing home patients who get COVID nineteen and die without getting tested. Their deaths don't actually, with the exception of France, who decided to change their reporting policy. Generally speaking, those patients don't actually get counted as part of the death count for coronavirus. 
So, so based- it's not just that you're wait, 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 let me finish. Sorry, sorry. It's not it's not just that you are missing deaths. I mean, sorry, it's not just that you're missing cases when you don't have an untested population. You're also missing deaths. Now, one some analysis that people have done is they've looked at the expected death rate for the month of March, and they've looked at it at different providences in different cities, and they have compared it to the current death rate, and they've seen how much of the coronavirus reported deaths can account for it. And it turns out that... And it turns out that in many of these cases, the death rate has skyrocketed so high that you would have to multiply the COVID cake deaths that you found by four in order to account for it. So we may be actually underestimating the COVID deaths. Just like we may underestimate the COVID cases, we may be underestimating COVID deaths by a factor of four. Now, yes, we are going to underestimate, we are going to miss more COVID cases than we're going to miss COVID deaths. However, if your current estimate is, let's say your current estimate for mortality rate is 1%. That means that if you are looking at an untested population, if you, mi- if you miss one death, if you miss one death for every hundred, you actually are on target. So even if you're missing, if your current estimate is one percent, even if you're missing a hundred asymptomatic cases or cases that are, don't result in death, for every one case you miss that results in death you're actually not overestimating. And if, you, if it's, not, it's 1 to 99, guess what? You're actually underestimating if your current estimation is, um, if your current estimation is 1%. If your current estimation is somewhere around 3%, um, let's say you find out that in the untested population, you missed the death for every 25 non-death cases that you are missing. Guess what? You're currently underestimating the death rate. And there's new data coming out to indicate that we actually may be underestimating because of the untested population. And as we expand our tests, the death rate will actually uh, increase rather than decrease. And if we look at the closed cases, not the open cases, if we just look at not open cases, if we look at closed cases where we look at what has an outcome, what the cases for which there is an outcome, whether either it's a recovery or death, um, you start to see not you, you don't see this case. I'm, I'm trying to pull it up I'm right now. I don't how many tests testing. have you done or taken? Or, I haven't. Or I haven't done. I've you. I've ordered tests. Like we, our job is to we, we order the tests. Um, yeah, sure. I don't actually do the tests. No, I, I understand. I, my understanding though is that yeah. there were a bunch of people who they were saying that even if people had the symptoms, they weren't testing. Because they knew they didn't have the capacity, it could take them ten days to get it anyways. Uh, yeah, that's that is changing. We're getting quicker uh, response times and yeah, we are. The past. Like a month ago, actually, I work in the lab. I'm, we're 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 training right now. Like, how is it though? Like, what what is the state of it? Wait, just real right quick now. before we get before we get to that, I so I've responded to this guy's um critique. Um. So does he have a response to um, my response to his, to what he said? Sure, he does he not. Didn't there's even no, you fucking, just, he, there, he, there's, he there's no happy spot. ending to this conversation where like just, you say yeah. something that makes sense and he's like, oh, I never thought about it like that. You're correct. So like it's yeah, you're you're not gonna get any anywhere with this. So basically, from 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 my understanding, if we didn't ration the test, wouldn't that, if anything, create a, a, a skewed number because we wouldn't be getting tests to those who need the most or something? If I'm not mistaken. Well, the the idea is we it, it may or may not be a skew, and if it's a skew, we don't know what the direct skew will be. There are reasons to believe, actually, as we test more people, we may find that the mortality rate is actually higher than we thought. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. St- 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 stats is above my pay grade, so. Yeah. Oh. The thing that sucks is that all the the type of testing that we're moving towards. Um, is much more likely to tell you whether you have it or you have a negative when the interesting number, I think, is who has all had it, right? Like, the, this is, and and the five-minute test doesn't really screen for this, just because... Of By the way, stuff. if anyone is interested, to date, if you look at the cases uh, globally, the mortality rate is only thing. Um, I'm trying to cases for the USA. What is it? But I'm having... What did you say? 
if you look at close cases over time, I believe the mortality rate is increasing, not decreasing. Yeah. yeah. And New York is messing us up, man. The the number that like I'm really curious about, and I've, I've been trying to figure um, is like we can't seem to get, and I think Italy is probably the best place because, as other than Italy and what I know of, which is too hot. All right. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. Uh, um, so, so other other than Italy, right? Um, and I know two hospitals in Brooklyn that this occurred in. Um, the mortality rate in institutions. Um, that hit surge capacity and actually fully ran out of vents at, over a prolonged period of time enough of say like two to three days to give you like an increased mortality rate. Um, no one seems to be able to provide these numbers of what percentage of deaths in any area uh, occurred as a result of, 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 of this event happening. And I think like of all the numbers that I don't know right now, that number is the most interesting to me. And I think the one that matters the most. And we can't seem to get this number for some reason. I'll leave you guys um, with something I just posted um, for, uh, there's a lot of sophistry trying to make a, dis, uh, dis, uh, make a similarity between this and the flu. Um, of the people who have come in with symptoms requiring ICU care, I just posted in debate evidence um, the percent, the mortality rate by age and also um, by condition with the flu and COVID-19 um, among people who are both care. Um, and there's no question that um, one is greater than the other. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I'll, I'll um, I think we're going into it's past 12 now. So does anyone, are there any like quick other questions that anyone has before I take off? Uh, what about the actual, um, there's rumors or some studies that say the uh, virus is still evolving and that uh, death rates even amongst the young are actually increasing. So, uh, due to the virus, what do you think about the evolution of the virus and increased threat? I'm, is the question that, are, is it increasing the mortality rate in the young right now? Or are we seeing more young people dying? Well, there's uh, some research that states that the virus may be evolving. I don't know for sure. Oh, the virus is, okay, so the virus is definitely evolving. It's mutating. The question is, in what, what are the consequences of those mutations? I don't know is the answer to that. I don't know, and I don't know if anyone knows at this point. I don't know if it's going to be more virulent, less virulent. I don't know. If, I have no idea. Um, and I haven't, I'm not aware of any studies um, examining this in, in depth to date. But if there are, I'd be happy to take a look at it. There's, I, don't know if you, did, I don't know if someone asked you about this. I'm seeing something um, about uh, ivermectin um, from ivermectin. Australia. Yeah. 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 Uh, that if 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 it's actually, it seems like it might be uh, beneficial. And if it is, um, it's um, it seems like it's killing it within the twenty four hours. The virus, as a case, it is I have not to look at the. Yeah, I they have just to look at. It seems like it's Friday. in vitro. Yeah, but this is in vitro though. Yeah, but um, still, they just discovered it on Friday. Yeah. No, I understand, but like, I just want you to. To you guys to understand, in vitro, in vitro data very rarely translates to clinical outcomes. We've seen a lot of in vitro compounds that end up killing viruses, and when we try to give it to a human uh, who has the virus, it doesn't do anything. Um, so yeah. I would put, it's, it's something worth testing, but I wouldn't put a lot of confidence in ivermectin at this time. Do you think that like a good chunk of what we're seeing, because I keep seeing the same shit, right? I keep seeing like, um, like every time, um, what people that work within the field of research understand to be like um, the the b before the hypothesis even, step, uh, and it's getting like news. Do you think there's just like new shit? Because I, I kind of feel like there's some like um, economic stock impact of like biotech related investments of every company trying to release information of like, oh, we're working on a fucking coronavirus cure to like get a bump in 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 like their their current market price i cannot speculate on those practices within the stock market i'm not a practitioner within the stock market um and also i'm in research so if i was especially for the companies i would have too many conflicts of interest for the shows. Yeah. so okay. so do you uh 
So do you work? Are you employed by a pharmaceutical company like Pfizer or something? Like, don't let me ask it. Like, no, not exactly. No, I work for. I'm not employed by a pharmaceutical. Company. I am employed by an academic institution, uh, and I do. Uh, I'm. I do make pharmaceutical companies pay the academic institution for my labor. Essentially, uh, they pay me to do uh, to run their studies. They don't pay me for any. They don't pay me for any outcomes. Uh, they essentially the academic institution pays me for my labor to run the study. Um, and the study is sponsored. The study happens to just be sponsored by the pharmaceutical companies. Oh, okay. It's just coinc- coincidental. So they've. I, um, I, I, I had a crazy, I had a crazy and probably stupid question, but uh, do you think it would be viable for the U.S. to effectively nationalize the pharmaceutical industry, considering that, from my understanding, most research comes from uh, universities already? Dude, are those are those um, Okay, so 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 that's a very complicated topic. Um, whew, I don't know if we have time to get into this. Um, just real briefly, the issue, the only issue with that is that um, in order to, there's a lot, there's an enormous amount of money that goes into developing drugs. And part of the, the reason why certain drugs are developed that wouldn't have been developed otherwise is because the United States has a private system that pays an enormous amount of money for um, given drugs once they have a patent. And it provides them, these companies, incentive to develop certain drugs that may not have otherwise been developed. If you look at the amount of um, compensation in other countries compared to ours, a lot more than other countries are because of our private system. In a lot of ways, we're subsidizing. We're indirectly subsidizing other countries. With the FDA, I've always said this. It's uh, it's like an extra patent, right? Like, we wouldn't have Viagra if it was a... The FDA doesn't approve uh, generics, so, like, they end up having a longer time in the market, right? Yeah, it's, it's... The issue is just that when pharmacy companies are making a decision whether to put in the investment to develop certain drugs, um, one of the things they look to is the biggest payer they look to in terms of the assessment of their payback is the United States because we pay the most for um, these medications. We, we're going to pay, especially if there's a patent, then it's, it's not generic. We pay more than other countries. And our system of paying is very much more simple and just direct and also higher than other countries are. And so the question should be asked, if, if, all, if we all operated the same way, say the United Kingdom operated for paying for medication, uh, would certain uh, drugs, there's a good chance we may have less drugs that actually would be developed in the world. In a lot of ways, the United States is subsidizing drug development for the rest of the world because of that. I don't know if I have a good answer to it's a great answer, answer to that. So I was asking about bacteriophages in this regard. Well, again, this, the problem is COVID-19 is not a bacteria, so I don't know how a bacteriophage would, would help. Um, even but 50% that is, even... of people who die from COVID also have a secondary bacteria, right? Oh, yes. if you're talking, yeah. When it comes to... It's a secondary, yeah, but we have, tr- we have effective treatments for these secondary. Look, about, uh, bacteriophage but... for... No, I'm talking about... Like, but there's uh, antibiotic, antibiotic resistance and high strength. Wait, 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 one at a time, guys, guys, guys. Yeah. Sorry, like, I was just leading off that, that there's uh, increased antibacterial resistance, um, antibiotic resistance, I mean. Yeah, sure. Uh, we, look, may, maybe, look, it, eventually, because the issue with bacteriophages are very highly untested right now, and we, there's, we just really, there's a lot we don't know about them in terms of their efficacy in vivo with that, there's, with actually, I'm not aware of any bacteriophage clinical trial right now, um, actually, yeah, that they... has been... Yeah, they do a lot of it in Georgia, actually, in the former USSR, apparently, because apparently the USSR actually spent decades doing research into this shit. And as a result, the former USSR nations, particularly Georgia, actually has done a lot of research into bacteriophages. And this, uh, I think, Vice did a video on it. It might have been another thing, but it looks pretty promising. Especially when wait, it comes to wait, feeding. was it a clinical, was it a, was it an actual clinical or was it just in vitro work? Um, clinical maybe, uh, it, it's been a while since I looked. All right, I'd have to see the, yeah. So you can send me, look, you can ping me and send me the data and I'd be happy to take a look. All right, I got to wrap up, guys. It's get, it's like 30 already, wait, so it's uh, really, really Bobby, late. I have, a, I have a question, yeah. actually. All right, last one to Belkin. Yes, okay. So what what is the oh bad news? 
about uh, that vegan say uh, about like how it started in with animals. In, uh... Okay, I, I literally, we can post the video because we literally just 25 minute video about this. So let's just post that and we'll go. All right, bye, Dad. Bye. Uh, I love you, Avi. I'm your biggest fan. Bye, Sophie Zuckerberg. Bye, everyone.